dictate through the words of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah to come out of this place, but you're not listening. Okay? My whole father. Second Judges 15, verse 2. And cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. Right, going back to Second Judges 15, verse 2. Speaking of the scripture, okay, the words of the Lord. I was trying to be written in paper. I'm wearing paper. Right here. Okay, this is our God book. Okay. Yeah. Second Judges 15, verse 2. Okay, let's go to Second Judges 15, verse 2. Okay. Our God book on how to govern ourselves right here in this wicked yeah. land that we're in. Okay? How not to be like the other people and other nations of this place. Okay? Holy means separate. Okay? Verse 3. Fear not the imagination against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. Right? Fear not the imagination. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee. Okay? The unbelief of the other nations. Okay? Okay, telling us to speak to you constantly in hopes that you'll get it, but it's only for the elect, okay, for right now. For those who are not going to miss it, you'll be caught up in the madness that's going to come. And eventually, what? Nuclear destruction that's going to come from this wicked place, okay? Verse 4, for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. You hear that? For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Okay? You praising these other powers. Okay? Not praising Yahweh Baha'i and Yahweh Shah. Okay? That we come out here every week. Okay? And the names of the Lord are spoken. Okay? But of course, we, only, we know it's only four that you left. They're going to hear it. But we're going to keep sounding like a broke record. I have no problem sounding like a broke record. Okay? Because we know at the end it's going to play real smooth. You will see all hell breaking loose from that. You're just going to be playing in your ear. The classical music, you're going to be looking at you, going crazy. You're going to be laughing our ass at that. You're going to be laughing our ass at Children, 
See, right there. I, my people are foolish. They have not known it. They are solid. Solid means what? Stupid. And he's right on point with that, man. Two thirds of the so called black cartoons and they ain't nothing. You're stupid. Okay, you love to say here with some wicked ass things, man. This place is bragging with good things. Okay? Up, brother, to back you up. You went to ancient Egypt in the cab. Yep. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 19, verse 11. Surely the princes of Zoan are fools. The counsel of the wise counselors of Pharaoh has become brutish. Now say ye unto Pharaoh, I am the son of the wise, the son of ancient kings. For that spirit of ancient Egypt followed unto this present day. We still got our people trying to rely on the ancient idols of the pagan gods of the kingdoms of old. They're still carrying the perverse spirit. Verse 12, where are they? Where are thy wise men? And let them tell thee now, and let them know what the Lord of hosts have purposed upon Egypt. So the idols are gonna be broken. They're gonna be burned with fire. The Lord is pissed off with this place. So the entire system it's coming down. We're sick of this place. And we still got people walking by, ignoring the word of the Most High. This is not a game. Right. Isaiah 19 and 14. The Lord hath mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof. And they have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof, as a drunken man staggereth in his vomit. That you came. Yeah, man. It goes all the way back to ancient Egypt, man. You 
you know, our iniquity. You know, as the brother was saying, man, the Heavenly Father's fed up with this place. Okay? And when he brings that destruction, man, ain't, ain't no bleeding in. It's gonna be too late. It's gonna be way too damn late. The chance of repentance is now. Okay? And that hourglass is running out of sand as we speak. You know, if you go look at an old hourglass and see how the sand runs through it, you know, and get down to that last little bit, the time is up, man. It's like on that movie, uh, uh IG4, with Will Smith back in the day, you know, he was looking at the computer. The time was counting down. <laughs> we got the zero, my man said, time is up, man. That so-called train let out that damn beam and let them people have it, man. You know? That's gonna happen here. In real life. You know, it ain't gonna be as dramatic as that. It's gonna be real. It ain't gonna be a game. Okay? Jeremiah 14 and verse, uh, of verse 11. Then said the Lord unto me, Pray not for this people, for their good. When they fast, I will not hear their cry. And when they offer burnt offering and an oblation, I will not accept them. But I will consume them by the sword and by the famine and by the pestilence. Wow. Yeah, too. wow. That's tough right there. When, you, when the Lord is not going to hear your prayers. Because all the BS you're doing, you're doing everything you can do under the sun, but listen to the prophets bring you the words of Yahweh while Yahweh shot in hopes of salvation, okay? A better world, okay? Food, water, clean air, okay? Rest, which we so badly need, man. You know, you go, you go home, you go to sleep. From work, man, it's like you up the next five minutes after you went to sleep. Like, God damn, I just laid down. Time to get up and go to the end. You gotta put in your mindset, man, that there's something better than this, man. And it's right here in the scriptures. The scriptures is telling you, man. It's telling you what's coming up out of this place, man. So if you want to stay here, step aside, man. You can have this place, all right? We out here for the elect, man. You gotta have it. Amos 9 and 10, all the sinners of my people shall die by the sword. They say the evil shall not overtake or prevent us. Understanding because we all sin, the sinners of my people. Let's talk about the, 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 the wicked, the, those that, of our people that don't want to repent. That's the difference. Like, because we're all sinners, but then you've got those, you got those Israelites that choose not to repent. You know, they're going to die by the sword. Right? Which is that, that mystery, the mystery. Okay? Yeah, like the brother was going into. You know, speaking of uh, two thirds of our people that are spread over the four corners of the earth. Understand this. There's no way you can go on this planet where the Lord can't reach you, okay? His eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. So you can try to go and leave Babylon if you want, but wherever it is you want to be, he's going to be there too. <laughs> There's no escaping the Lord, okay? So your best bet is come back to your power. I mean, how is it that... Our people don't understand when we break it down to where they are according to the sign here and the scriptures that we have the greatest power to exist. And we're denying that. Okay, we're holding we're separate people. We're telling all the nations on the planet. Okay, and we're, we're passing that up to basically continue to mingle with them. Okay? And what they keep doing. You know, they don't give a crap about us. You know, what the scripture said, you can astonish me, a carver, a byword, niggas, snicks, wetbacks. It goes on and the list goes on and on. It's like they continue to make up new names for us, new derogatory names, okay? But here you have the Christian churches trying to grab in the other nations into to our blessing. No, it don't work like that. It don't work like this. This is only for the elect, okay? Isaiah 30, verse 11. Get, he, get you out of the way to the side of the path for the Holy One of Israel to cease from, to cease from the forest. It says, uh, 
As then 30 and 11, get ye, or get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path, because the Holy One of Israel proceeds from before us, wherefore thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because he despised this word, and dressed in oppression and perverseness, and stay thereon. Therefore this iniquity shall be to you as a breach, ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose break is coming suddenly at an instant. Right, man, that's our people, man. They don't want to hear this word. Two-thirds of our people. You know, they don't want to hear this word. They'll say, oh, get out of here. We don't want to hear that. That's all y'all do is come out here every weekend. You know, you want to hear this. Exactly. They say to the sea is prophesied not. Prophesied not. You know, they tell us get out of here. You know, then they get mad. You know, oh, we don't do this to you. We don't do that to you. We don't do that to you. That the Lord won't allow you to do that. And understand when you try to come at the man of the Lord, it's not going to be good for you, okay? You got to watch what you say out of your mouth also when you speak, but when you come at the men of the Lord. Give me uh, Matthew, is that Matthew 12, 12 13? 36, 37, the Bible shop. Yeah, man. You got to watch what you say out your mouth. You know, the Lord ain't playing with nobody, man. He's playing with none of us. That's right. Okay? When he brings that pain, man, it's not going to be a pretty sight, nor a pretty, pretty feeling, man, at all. Because he's going to bring it. He ain't going to play. You know, he ain't playing now. You just see how many people taking out, taking these rappers out, you know, taking these artsy women out, okay? He's still running around playing games, right? That's fine. Guess what? Matthew 12, verse 36. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Right there. Every idle word that men shall speak. Let's understand that's men and women. Let's be so we saw about so called black Latinos and Native Americans. Watch what you say, okay? Because you're going to be held in account in the day of judgment, okay? Verse 37. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Right. By thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Think about that when you, when you hear that scripture. Okay, when you come up against the men of the world, starting with our elders, okay? You will have elder faith, okay? Understand the Lord is long-suffering. He gets you when he wants, where he wants, how he wants. That's something you should fear, because you never know when he's going to come. Okay? If he asks his father, run, keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of the Most High. And be right there. Not to cut you off, but right there. Keep thy foot when you shut up, be quiet. Be more ready to hear than speak. It's very important. Okay? Because what you learn in this society is all BS, okay? So it's very important to listen, okay? It's got to be broken down and built back up. We all have it. You doing okay? Good. This is a learning process. We're constantly learning every day also, okay? You can't just take this book and just learn. I'm going to do it like I got it, man. No. Hey, y'all, was coming to death. Look at this. Lamentation, death, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. Yeah. 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 And it reads, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. 22, and it reads, whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor of the Lord your house. You got it, bro. Here we go. Come on. So you find a good, uh, whoever find a good wife, 
go back up to the top, top of uh, 21. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely um, life out of the power of the tongue. Right. And they that love it should eat the fruit thereof. Right. And uh, you got to watch what you say. Because, I mean, it's a penalty for that. Absolutely. Yeah. And you see how the brother just grabbed another scripture from another book that's showing you how the book just matches up all over the place. All over the place, man. That's why it sounds like a broken broken record because you're being told over and over throughout the book, the entire book. <laughs> There's no excuse. You know, if it's like uh, you're home, you're a kid, you know, your mother tell you stop doing something, stop doing something, your father tell you stop doing something, what happens? They get at you. They correct you. They will keep letting you do what you want and you're not going to get corrected. How much more than how every father? Y'all why you have a shot? What? Uh, Ecclesiastes 5 and 1, keep thy foot without words to the house of the most high, and be more ready to hear than to get the sacrifice of fools, or they consider not that they do uh, evil. First Kings, uh, first Kings uh, yeah, listen, chapter 1 or 2, or 19, something like that. In these times, our sacrifices are actions, our words, okay, what, what doctrine we, we uh, subscribe to, you know? That's the, 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 the doctrine is just a body, body of teaching, you know, the teaching that we can talk. So what's a sacrifice of fools? Last week we had to be talking about some instrument advantage. That's a sacrifice of a fool. Okay? And what, what do the scriptures say about a fool? Uh, wisdom is too high for a fool. You know? That's why here we're able to obtain wisdom because we're not foolish. You know, the sacrifice of a fool is you know, foolish doctrine, another Yahweh Shai, all right? Uh, Egyptology, everything that's adverse to the truth. Right? All right? That's the sacrifice of a fool. Got a precept, brother, to back you up. This is Proverbs 18, verse 6. A fool's lips enter into contention, and his mouth falls for strokes. The fool is always looking for controversy, debate. They're just full of debate and malice. They really don't have an interest in the solution or the truth. They just love drama. That's an effeminate trait. Well, I'm just going to disagree so that we can have a debate. We ain't got time for no damn debate. It's the truth, and that's it. And it's only for the elect. Proverbs 18 and 7. A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. So the words coming out of this book leads to life. Yes. But anything contrary to pure truth leads to death and destruction. That's why America's called perdition, or it goes into perdition. That eighth kingdom in Revelation 17 because it's contrary to the good book. God, it's like the brother going into, man. It's about life. Our power is about life. Yahweh, Yahweh, Shah is about life. That's right. Okay? But understand he controls both life and death. Somebody give me Deuteronomy 32 and 39. Deuteronomy 32 and 39. Before the, uh, the point changes over, just wanted to bring out this precept because the main thing is this, you got to understand our people, they're going to talk, they're going to talk that shit because they don't believe that we're actually men of the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, the whole concept of prophets to them is like kind of fairy tale. Yep. You know, they think prophets are people that have these white garments that floating on clouds, you know, random shit like that. <laughs> you know, but they don't understand that the Lord took simple men, mm -hmm. you know, men that don't look the greatest or whatever. We're not wearing tuxedos and suits. And he's actually speaking through us, right? So they're going to say and talk whatever they want to say. But the Lord, he sees that and he hears that. And you got to be careful because when the men of the Lord throw up curses and when they say certain things, the Lord hears those curses. And we have plenty of stories. We keep it inside. We don't always say it. We have plenty of stories of when someone has done us wrong, if you throw up a curse and now that person is fucked up. Yeah, their life is messed up. Mm. Some people just gone, flat out. Right? So the Lord hears these things. Now this is one example. This is 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 23 and 24. This is talking about Elisha. He was an understudy of Elijah. 23 says, And he went up from thence unto Bethel, and as he was going up by the way, there came forth little children out of the city. Now these are little ass kids. Little children, not a kid, kid is a baby goat, right, right? But little children, right? Let's just say six, seven, eight, right? 
little niggas, that's what they were. So there came forth little children out of the city, and they mocked him, and said unto him, Go up, thou bald head, go up, thou bald head. And he turned the and he turned back. So Alicia like, he like what? He looking back at these little dudes. And he turned back and he looked on them. And he probably mugged their little ass. And he cursed them in the name of Yahweh God Shem Yahweh Shai. And there came forth two she bears out of the wood and tear forty and two children of them. So the she bears came. And they came and fucked the children up. Ate them, run alive. It's not like the children are already dead, they ate them alive. But that's what happened. People don't know that shit is still happening today. Those type of actions, those kind of prayers are still going up today. Y'all think we just get together like this, you know, and not really believing in the prayers that we're throwing up, not believing in the words that we're speaking? You got to be very careful when you're talking about the men of the Lord. Because if he don't get you now, he's going to get you in that day when Jacob's trouble happens. Sure. Let's believe. Y'all not talking about regular men right now. I got one more precept before we change topics. This is Sirach 4, starting at verse 4. It says, Reject not the supplication of the afflicted, neither turn away thy face from a poor man. I remember years back when I was working at a certain place, and this lady, she got me fired. She lied on me and said that, certain brothers know. Remember, she, she lied on me and said that it was her and she, she said 11 other of her friends also, she said, I, I harassed all 12 of them in total. So she got me fired, right? Now, what happened was a few months later, I wound up getting a better job. The brothers looked out for me, paid my rent, everything. I wanted to get a better job, double my pay. It was like 10 minutes away from my house, right? Everything worked out good. I seen her about a year later. I seen her a year later that this was destitute. She was looking like she was on drugs. Her eyes was like bad down to her goddamn lips. Well, it looked crazy. Yeah. Right. Now this is the thing though. I didn't even throw no curses on it because I said the Lord's gonna get her ass. I wasn't worried about it. I saw her when we were out teaching. And she walked by, she didn't even see me. But I looked at her, I said, damn, she looks crazy. Mm. She is fucked up, bro. I saw her. Now, this is what it says, Sirach 4. Verse 4, reject not the supplication of the afflicted, neither turn away thy face from a poor man. Turn not away thine eye from the needy, and give him none occasion to curse thee. For if he curse thee in the bitterness of his soul, his prayer shall be heard of him that made him. So the Lord hears everything. And that's why the scriptures talk about how Yahweh Shah is our mediator. Because sometimes you don't even throw that curse. You just, mm, oof, I can just, mm. And you don't even know, you can't even express it sometimes, but Yahweh Shah like, all right. He's like, all right, I hear you, you know? So the angels go get her ass, get his ass, right. you know? We don't even gotta say something sometimes. Big bro's watching now. Yeah. That's why y'all should fear. Right. We're not just out here on our own accord. Yahweh Shah got our back. That's yeah. right, that's right. All right, what you want? I got you. Yeah. This is the book of Deuteronomy 32 and 39. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make the lie. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. See, I kill, I make a lie. Okay? I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. There is no power with me. Alright? There's no power above the heavenly father your house okay no power all right the heavenly father this is out what he wants done here and there who, who he wants to come through okay and we got the son the angel even on the left hand side say if you will he's balanced all right he's never out of balance okay church uh, teach you all Satan's on this whole thing no he's not you can find that in the book of Job not doing his own thing. He never was, never will be. He's under the commandment of the Heavenly Father, just like the rest of us are. Okay? He controls it all. You still got to watch what you say, man. It's not a game, boy. This is... Oh, damn. 
verse 6 is good too. Psalm 34, verse 6. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth him. Yeah. Mm. The angels camp around us, man. You can't see them there. We know they're there. got a precept, bro. Yeah, this is Sirach, chapter 35, verse 12. Do not think to corrupt with gifts, for such he will not receive. And trust not to unrighteous sacrifices, for the Lord is judge, and with him is no respect of persons. He will not accept any person against a poor man. But we'll hear the prayer of the oppressed. So when you look at this through the spirit, the house of the Lord was cast down to a low estate. So this is not the time to be mocking the men of the Lord, which are a part of the gospel, the ministry. So the vessels of his treasure are cast down to the earth. So to try to mock the men of the Lord, that means you're going against his word. The same thing they did to Yahweh Shai, the disciples. They just looking at men in the flesh, men in the flesh, but they don't see the anointing on these men, like this brother. Yeah, good example, because just like it said, the Lord is not a respecter of person, and that's why the Lord got the little kids, the little nigglets, when Elisha, uh, what you call it, he cursed them. I don't know if y'all remember, but a few years ago when we was across the street, remember them little nigglets throwing water balloons at us? Yep. The Lord gonna get them. Yeah. Even if he didn't do it now, he gonna get them. We don't gotta throw no curses on him. Who cares? It was just water balloons. But still, you know, we out here doing the work. It's a serious thing, and they playing around. Like they was throwing like snowballs and stuff like this too. The so Lord's gonna remember everything. Like literally everything. They don't know the Most High is actually a power that that's near. He sees everything. He hears everything. No nothing go unnoticed. Everybody trying to hide in their sin. That's why the Most High always said it. Look, just confess your sins. That's all you have to do. Yep. People acting like it's a hard thing. People got too much pride. Just yeah. confess your sins. And the most high is going to be merciful. His mercy and forever. That's what it says. All right, that's it. Oh, 
right. It's packed, man. And out of everybody, the, the, the things that are, that are pleasing to the world is talk to us. And that's literally a, a, a free pass to salvation, man. Lord willing, if we're the elect. You know, we got a good chance because of all these people on this side of the world, man. It's just a handful. We barely 30 deep out here. Black 
clinging on to that word, man. That word, the ways that and the ways that come with it. Okay? With collard greens, pork and beans, if you will. You know, those are all our ways, man. All our so, ways are coming out right here. Give it to us. comes with it. Heartache, death, literal heartache, and literal death. You know, go to the doctor, what do you do? He prescribes some medicine, you go back to the doctor, oh, this ain't working, doc. Okay, I got this one for you. And then what, it's a all along the couch. The same saga, the saga continues, okay? If you want to get out of that saga, it's right here for you. Week in and week out. Brother, you mentioned that $31 trillion of American debt. Uh -huh. They're going to use that to set a snare and trap to make you get that digital device in order to be able to get out of that, that fabricated debt. All this is man-made. This, this place was not made for us to prosper. It's made to keep us in captivity and bondage. So they want to digitally tag and track and bag everybody on the grid. That's what it's all about. They create debt with these Federal Reserve notes. Everything is a debt slave system. I saw my hair. Okay. All right. This is Ezekiel 33, verse 31. And they come unto thee as the people coming, and they sit before thee as my people. And they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after their covenant. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. Right, so they're going to understand that these are actually the words that are going to lead to them everlasting life, salvation. Because right now it doesn't seem as if these words are any kind of valuable to the world at all, right? They don't see the absolute true gold in the words that we're after preaching. And we're really speaking to help me call this words. But then in these days to come, it's going to truly be made known who actually has the words that lead to life. When we're actually calm and we're settled and in the day of destruction with everybody confused, they're going to look back and say, oh man, who were those men? Where were they? I should have listened. Like the brothers have been going into, nobody's really coming up. Mother mentioned that the bird came before men stood. That's crazy. Because we're walking around, a brother walked right by the bird and it just stood there and turned around and looked at you. You know, it was a church at you. You know, it wasn't scared at all, you know. But that's just an example that we're bringing out so that our people did not listen. But they're going to want to listen when it's too late. Well, you know, it's funny because none of these other camps speak on that part of the scripture. 
you know, we'll, 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 we'll get into the first 17. But they don't talk about that. Let's read it first. Yeah. Verse 17 in Revelation 13, and that no man might buy or sell, save, or meaning except, mm -hmm. he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Now, none of these other camps, when you listen to them, they don't speak on verse 17. It's always verse 16 and they jump to 18. But they skip over the buy and the selling. Right. So if it's sin, tell me, how does the buying and selling lead into sin? If it's an embargo on Christianity or whatever they say, if it's the, uh, what is it called, the image of Jesus Christ, how does that tie to buy and selling? A white woman. A white, 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 white woman. Yeah. So you're not, you're not married to Esau. You're not going to be able to get <laughs> right. You know, right. You know, talk about that. IUIC. Mm -hmm. All you other camps. What does verse 17 mean? Right. And how does that tie into what you believe the mark actually truly is? Because what we're telling you is that the monetary system here in America and globally is about to change. Yep. Now, when you watch certain different YouTube videos and these insiders, they're coming out and telling you specifically, it's not even like a mystery anymore. Mm -hmm. Like the whole like conspiracy crap, like it's, it's out the window right now. Mm -hmm. Everybody's telling you on various different YouTube videos, the CBDC is going to be tied to something inside of your body. Like they literally have said it just like that, yep. very much verbatim. So now, what's that CBDC? It's a digital currency. What's going inside your body? Oh, Revelation 13. Like, it's not hard to understand, but because GMS says it, oh, now you don't want to bring it out. Yeah. Now we got to skip past 17, because that means we got to come under their doctrine. They were right. Come on, man. Look, don't nobody care about that. Right. Just preach the truth. I know. Don't right. nobody care about if you got to come under GMS or, mm -hmm. oh, we were always right. It ain't, it ain't about that. Uh, it's about just speaking the 100% truth. If you got it, you know to speak on that. I'm going to read it again. I'll let you sleep. It's Revelation 13, verse 17. It says, And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 600 to score and six. Now this is how powerful this book is, brother. Right when you start talking about this mark, the spirit took me right here. And I didn't even know why I was going there. Hey, this, this thing is real. Because I didn't know until he finished. This is James 1, verse 1. James, a servant of God, and of the Lord, Yehoshad, Hamashiach, through the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. So it applies today, the daughter of Babylon, and the other places of our captivities. It's addressed to us. Watch this. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. So that temptation is going to come upon all the world. That diverse temptation being tempted to take this man digital tracking device. You can't tell me the Bible is not a true book. Verse 3, knowing this, that the trying of your faith make work in patience. So we gotta go through the trial and the test of our faith. We're not gonna just walk or tap dance into the kingdom. The Lord, the Son of the Most High, was beaten with many stripes, hit with two third by two third wicked jakes, spitting in his face, punching them and slapping them. How in the hell are we gonna just walk into the kingdom? Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. So that test, that trial, all roads lead back to this major prophecy. I know you can see it. Take the water, King. Got it. Okay, the trying of your faith worketh patience. Okay? I mean, you're going to have to suffer. Okay? You're going to go through some things. Okay? I don't know say you went through so much, man. No man in existence will ever be able to go through what he went through. Okay? No man. Okay? But we're going to go through things also. Yep. All right? The Heavenly Father's not going to tip you much more than you can handle. We're roughly paraphrasing that. Okay? Somebody grab that. So lucky I didn't read verse 4. While he's getting that, this is back to James. So lucky I didn't read verse it. 4. But let patience have her perfect work 
that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Now this took me right to that scripture where now Yahweh Shai is occupying a throne. Mm. For what? We're following that path to put on the crown. I know you see it. So this is a part of that being tested. Most of us understand whenever you, when we were in the world, every game had to go through a, a gauntlet of different tests. But this is spiritual. So we're going to be exalted above the nations. This thing is heavy. So this is all a part of earning those stripes. Yeah. And, and when it says, at the end of that verse, it says that he may be perfect wanting nothing. That the wanting nothing part is basically old English meaning like you lack nothing. Like you're not in need of anything. That's because earlier in that verse, it says the trying of your faith work is patience. Another word for patience is suffering. And when you go through that suffering process, you start earning your stripes. Stripes, as the big bro said. So now when you earn those stripes, you gain the peaceable fruits of righteousness. And now you're not lacking anymore. Now you can stand strong in that day. I've been saying it for the past few weeks. The whole reason why brothers are going through so much hell right now, Ooh. it seems like crazy brothers are going through hell. Like all around the globe. It's because the Lord is just stripping us of any kind of impurities that we have. Right? And he's uh, uh, redefining us, purifying us. And we're going through that fire so that when there's more fire, more fire. Ooh. When it comes, <laughs> right? Revelation 13, when that comes, we're going to be able to say, ah, you know what, I'm cool. I don't, I don't feel like I don't feel the, the need to take that tip. I don't feel the need to rely on Esau right now. The Lord is going to require 100% faith in that day. So we're, we need to be purified. Satan's going this thing. You know, it is what it is right now. Like, you can't get mad at Satan right now. You know what I'm saying? He's doing what he's supposed to do. But that's what he's supposed to do. That's, what, that's not what he's being told to do at the end of the day. Right? You got to take it like men. That's what it says. Show yourselves men. Right? Right, and then receive that chastening or you know whatever you gotta go through because the Lord is also working things out in your your faith for your benefit. Like the the Lord, man. The whole thing is patience, man. Yeah. Okay, and preparation first and foremost. So then we can come out week in and week out. Okay, to prep for what what's coming. Okay, all the brothers up here been through something, maybe going through something now. May Yahweh, Yahweh Shai see you through your situation, your trials and tribulations. Okay? So we go through something as little as uh, your car messing up on you, or your car be took, being taken from you. Okay? No need to get mad. Endure that, because it's much more coming that may be worse than that. But at the same time, if you can endure the small things, how much more the big things? Okay? So this is all preparation what's coming, okay? That's why it's important to constantly listen. I got you. This is 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. Mm -hmm. There is no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Mm -hmm. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. Mm -hmm. See, right there. Yeah. It's not going to put you through a situation that you can't handle. You know what you're going to do energy. also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. You know what I just thought of too? You know, we always break it down that way, but I just thought about it like this too from a different angle. Like if you go through something and you fell out because, oh, you couldn't bear your temptation or whatever, what you're basically saying is that the most high isn't strong enough to get you out of that situation. And that's also like saying the most high isn't in control of that situation. He's not in control of you going through whatever you're going through. Because he's the one that's actually giving you a way to escape. That's what it just says. So whenever you're going through any kind of temptations, any kind of trouble, or a perilous evil time, because evil just means a bad time, right? So when you're going through an evil time, you gotta remember the Most High is actually, he's capable. He's the one putting you through it. So he's capable of getting me out of it. Right. If you're not, if you're not holding strong in your faith, you don't believe he can get you out of that situation. That's what this is saying right now. Like during the time 
of Jacob's trouble. Listen, a time is going to come where every single brother up here is going to lose our jobs. We're all going to lose our jobs. We're not going to be having our vehicles. Everybody's going to be out of gas. The whole grocery stores are going to be gone too. So, yeah, everything. Bro, the, the, uh, the leaves and the trees, they're going to look like that in the time of Jacob's trouble. It's going to be everything destitute, right? But you got to remember that the Lord is actually making that situation happen in America. And if that's the case, you gotta think back and say, he never neglected me then, why would he be neglecting me now? Nothing changes, it's just a different situation. That's all. You had a question, bro? Yeah, one question, I got to preface, preface my question, though. So, so uh, I'm all in the Bible, I feel. of that story though. Well, the purpose, yeah, I'm gonna ask you that question. So, so 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 basically I, I think the moral of the story for me is no matter what kind of hardship God doesn't just allow, God actually brought that hardship. God actually told Satan, you can do this. You know, and, and, and so God was very much a part of it. You know, but but anyway, no matter what hardship God brings on you or or allows, either one cannot speak against God because, you know, if Job would have cursed God and if God would have killed him, Job's soul would have been in front of God and God would have been like, what did you just say? So no matter, and, and, and Job, Job said it himself. He, or, there are two things Job said that, that make a lot of sense that stand out to me. Mm -hmm. One was, though he slay me, I, I, I will not speak against him. You know, something to that right, right, I got and, you. And, I'll and, keep my integrity. And, and yeah. the other one was, was uh, shall I accept good from the Lord and not evil too? Right. You know, and, and I'll finish by saying that my favorite Bible verse, because it says a lot, is Isaiah 45, 7, where it says, I form light and create darkness. Yep. I make good and create evil. I the Lord to all these things. God is not this big Santa Claus in the sky right. that just gives you what you want for Christmas and your birthday or what have you. That's right. But God has a hard side to it. That's and right. If you accept God's good, you have to accept his evil too. That's right. Well, let me I got a question for you. What what name was me what must we call on to be saved? What name? Yes, what name? What's the name of the most high in the sun? Uh, to well, get salvation so, or deliverance. So, so, so first of all, God and Jesus are not the same being. I right. don't believe they are. You know, so but God, God's name in the Hebrew language is Yahweh. You know, and, and then Jesus' name in the Hebrew language is Yeshua. Yeshua HaMashiach. Well, the Most High Father's name is Yahweh. Yahweh? He is okay. or he exists. Yeah. His son's oh, name is Yahweh Shai. He yeah. delivered yeah. or deliverer. Yeah. 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 Well, those are the names we must know to be saved yeah. and believe on those names. Yeah, but you know, I, I, I've heard the stuff about how there was no J in the Hebrew language and all that stuff. But, you know, it's, it's like this stuff, you know. Israelites spoke Hebrew, we speak English. I don't see where God's going to be real technical about that issue. Well, that's where we are. God, that's God, that's God, where we disagree. God spirit made me ask that, language. see? If you look at the story of Babel, the Tower of Babel, oh. God brought yep. different language. It was one language at one time. Okay, well, break down this precept then. Acts 4 and 22. Acts 4 and 12. Yeah. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men 
whereby we must be saved. Mm. That sounds very technical to me. Right. So what's your interpretation of that? Well, my interpretation. What does well, that mean? Well, so, 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 the, so the Bible was originally written in Greek Hebrew and Aramaic, you know, and so when so in in the Hebrew language, you know, you you, you say in Hebrew, you know, that there's no other name given unto heaven, blah blah blah, you know. But I, I think it's pointing to the individual. So when it says no other name, that there's no other individual to whom you can be saved. That I don't think I don't think the focus is on the actual language. How can God hold it against me if I don't speak Hebrew? And well he, well the yeah. rest of the verse, brother, it says it says, for there is none other name. Yeah. 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 Well, so, well, so, let me ask you this, right? So, okay, so you, you believe it's you know, I'm enjoying our conversation. Yeah. Yeah. You say it's Yeshua. Yeah. Right? But yeah. you don't believe there's a ooh sound in our Hebrew language. Well well now, I, I, don't, I don't I don't think I didn't think finish you. my question. Yeah. But I don't speak it fluently either, yeah. but I know the names. Yeah. I don't need to speak it fluently. Yeah. You believe it's Yeshua, you believe it's Yahweh Shah. Right. Yeah. Now you say, oh well, we don't gotta get too technical. Yeah. That's like saying well, this guy's name is Tom, and that guy's name is Tim. Those are two different names, my right, brother. Right, right, if you yeah. call Tom Tim yeah. and Tim Tom, yeah. they're not going to answer you. Yeah, right, 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 right. And does not the scripture say, it says, I am the Lord, yeah. I will not give my glory to another. Uh, yeah, okay, so, so now, yeah. if you win an award, one last question. Yeah. If you win an award, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. now, I don't know your name, but let's just call you okay. Bob. I don't want to put okay. your name out there. <laughs> yeah. Now, if your name is Bob, yeah. now you win an award. But someone else, as they're calling you up, and the word goes to Billy. Are you going to stand up? No. No, because it's not your name. No. Even if it's close, no. you're not going to stand up because it's not yeah. your name. You yeah. don't recognize it. Right. So when you pray, and you're praying to an entity that you believe that's his name, yeah. but it's not, is he going to hear you? Is he going to hear you? No, I guess come not. on, bro. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know yeah, the answer. Yeah, yeah. Is, he, is he going to yeah. hear you? Come on, is be honest. Is he going to hear me? Be uh, honest. Is uh, he going to hear you? Uh, probably not. But okay, so so so, so I'll say this. Yeah, so so as far as the Tim Tom thing goes, because I speak English, I know the difference. You know, but but like my like my so my name is Eric. I don't I don't hear that. My name is Eric. But in Spanish, in the forties, I speak a little bit of Spanish, not 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 fluent, but I speak a little bit. You know, and if somebody Hispanic calls me Enrique. Because they, I don't say, well, they didn't call me Eric, I'm not going to answer. Because I know that I'm, I'm in a Hispanic community, and so they're going to call me Enrique when I'm there. When I'm in an English speaking community, they're going to call me Eric. You know, and if, I, if I went to Germany, I would learn my name in German. And then when they call me whatever it is in German, I, I would answer to that. Well, brother, let me, let me ask you a question real quick. And I'll read this. Yeah. Do you know America is in the Bible? It's spoken of as the daughter of Babylon. I so I'm getting ready to read something for you. I can believe it. So America is the daughter of Babylon. Two thirds of the so-called Negroes, Native Americans, and Latinos uh -huh. in America are going to be destroyed. I want you to break this down. Two thirds. Yes. Zechariah 13. Okay. Verse 8. Okay. And it shall come to pass uh -huh. that in all the land, saith the Lord, two uh -huh. parts therein uh -huh. shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein, uh -huh. and I will bring the third part through the fire. Uh, and will refine them as uh, silver is refined, nuclear destruction. Yeah. But the remnant is the third that's going to be preserved, saved. That's right. salvation. Okay. And I will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name. Yeah. And I will hear them. I will say, it is my people. And they shall say, the Lord is my power. Yeah. How about I shim you, I will try. Yeah. So if you go to Korea, uh, Eric. Yeah. You go to Saudi Arabia, Eric. Yeah. You go to Germany, yeah. Eric. Yeah. I've been to 25 different countries. Yeah. We've been lied to. Yeah. Names are transliterated, yeah. not translated, brother. Yeah. They lied to us yeah. and they put in Jesus yeah. because they knew there was yeah. power in the yeah. ancient Paleo Hebrew name, uh -huh. Yahweh, the Father, yeah. and Yahweh Shai, yeah. the Son. Yeah, so, so, take this, take Zephaniah 3 and 9. Yes. For then will I turn to the people of pure language. Yeah. Which is what you see it here. Yeah. Pure language. Yeah. And we believe this through faith. Yeah. All right? We believe that Abba Bebbage was given the Hebrew through faith. Yeah. So we believe it. Okay. We're going to Malachi the fourth book. He returned the heart of the children to the father. Mm. Right? That's what he did. We believe that. Zerach, the 48th chapter, if I'm not mistaken. 
all right? And you, you just he was there for the for the tribes of Jacob. Yeah. Right? That's what the yeah. scripture says, right? It says, Zephaniah 3 and 9, for then will I turn to the people of pure language, that they may call upon the name mm. of the Lord to serve him with one consent. Yeah. One consent. Yeah. We yeah. can't do no Yeshua over here, Yahweh over there. Yeah. Uh 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 what's that? Uh, we hear Yahuwah, you know, we hear, we hear yeah. everything on the side. Yeah. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. 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 Yeah. So, 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 you know, I, I told you what, what I was taught were the Hebrew names of God and Jesus. Uh -huh. You know, Jehovah, Yahweh, you know, and, and then, you know, Yeshua. So, you know, you, and, and you told me it's something different, you know. Uh, but, so, so, so then I consider myself to really have a strong heart for God. And, and so you mean to tell me then that because I I I didn't know the the actual Hebrew uh, name for God that God could ignore me all this time that any 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 good this thing, is what, this any is, good thing that happened in my life was not God this is or what was this, this, this is what this is what let me do this here I got to, I got your question and it's funny we actually talked about this last week uh -huh. this is the thing and then we'll bring out some precepts to show you uh -huh. and back up what we're saying uh -huh. we always come out of the scriptures. Yeah. Even before any of us came in this truth, I speak for myself. I was praying dearly to that so-called Jesus Christ, right? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking that's the name. Mm -hmm. Remember, the Israelites were put in captivity, were scattered amongst all these other nations. Mm -hmm. And we were brought up learning the gods and the culture and the ways of all these mm -hmm. other nations. So what it's coming down to is a remnant that the Lord is saving in these end days out of the nation of Israel, mm -hmm. so-called Black, Hispanic, Native Americans. Now, at a certain point in our lives, that's why it's no coincidence that you came up here. You believe it. God directed you to come up here and speak to us. At a certain point in all of our walks, the Most High rose us up and he said, now it's time for them to really understand who I am, the significance of my son's sacrifice and our true names. And at that moment, when we got the truth, then we started calling on the true names. Mm -hmm. Then we started understanding more of who we are. We got yeah. back into our culture. We understood about the covenant made to our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah. So it's about that the spirit yeah. actually dealing with you and revealing himself um, unto you. Yeah. Now let me show you this precept because, you know, yeah. we did all that real quick. Now I'm going to grab the book of John because this is what we brought out last week when we were going into this. This is John. I'll be 14 and verse, uh, John 14 and verse 26. It says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So it was about a certain point in time in which the Most High says, all right, now it's your time to wake up and come out of the dead. You know, the scriptures talk about the dead. Yeah. So now what you're doing is you're coming into the actual light, receiving yeah. the true name. Right? Yeah. You have something you want to bring yeah. up? Yeah, no, no. So, so, so I just, just so you know, in the spirit of full disclosure, that's actually my mom right there. So I, I, I'm actually adopted. So I, I know you're probably going to tell me something about this, but I carry a Polish last name, Shepta. No, not 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 all Polish names ended speak, just so you know. But but uh, anyway, my, my dad was Polish, my mom's Italian. So 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 that that that, that kind of changes a, a little bit, you know, about how people perceive me. Only only because I I didn't grow up with black culture. You know, hey, you hey, know. You're, you're blessed, bro. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> but, 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 but that said, you know, and, and, and uh, I should point out too, though, that my my grammar kind of make kind of make people think like, okay, he, he ain't from the hood. Sometimes, you know. But, but I, 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 I've been I've been down with my black brothers and sisters, homeless in the street, all that stuff, advocating for open. But that said, that that's background I think. Gotcha. But, but 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 anyway, you know, I didn't notice that that's a pretty well spoken yourself. Let's continue in the scripture. Yeah, yeah. Yes. We'll continue in the scripture. Yeah. 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 It says Deuteronomy 2836, we're speaking background. You know, what we're doing right now, the reason why we didn't know this is because of what I'm about to do right now. Deuteronomy 2836, the Lord shall bring thee and thy king which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. 
and there shalt thou serve other gods with a stone. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Break that down, bro. Yeah. yeah. So basically what that means is, this is and this is a curse, because when you read up uh, Deuteronomy 28, I don't know if you're yeah. familiar with the chapter, yeah. but it speaks about the blessings and the curses. Yeah. Alright? So one on down to 15, uh, the blessings, yeah. 15 on down, the curses, yeah. right? Uh -huh. So it says that the Lord will bring us into a nation which us. Which, need, which us need our fathers have thrown, and then we will serve other gods. Uh, we are the gods. We're the wood and stones. The, 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 uh, Jesus Christ. Right? That we all, at one point, all of us will be that. Some of us right. were brought up Muslim. You know? Yeah. And really, that, that's, there's a heavy, heavy Muslim community up there. Yeah. Even here, you know? The parts where I live in Virginia, Northern Virginia, there's a heavy Muslim community. Or even the so called Hispanics are Muslim. Uh, so, you know? Yeah. So that, that's Allah, that's one of the gods. Yeah. You know, those are the different gods. Jesus Christ, Allah, Shiv. So, so it, it, you know what I would say? Like, when people talk about knowing God, you know, I, I, I feel like this. You know, so King David wrote, I love that principles and that precepts. You know, and it, it, if you don't understand enough about God's principles and precepts, then, then, then you're not really worshiping God. I mean, I mean, like, I've, I've had little debates with uh, Muslims who are out proselytizing, you know, whatever, whatever you want to call it. You know, and, and our, our main sticking point was whether or not God has a son. They, because they believe that if God has a son, it means God is going to die and leave everything to his son, which is not necessarily true. But, but even so, that was our main sticking point. But for me, as a Bible believer, I, I don't say Christian, because too many Christians, that's too crazy for me. But, but I, I, I don't believe it, though. At least you know that. At least you know that much. And so... And, and so I, I don't have the same belief as my parents raised me with. When I grew up as a man, I said, there's, there's verses they didn't point out to me. And I, and I, I hope they didn't look for I'm a man now. I don't just believe because mom and dad made me go to church. I believe because what I read and how I understand it, and my understanding is different than what mom and dad said to me. You know, but... Okay. Check but, this out. Right. Well, we all had to do this unlearn and relearn. Uh, very important. The fourth, we go home and fact check. Yeah, yeah. Can we go back home to the old Yeah. The fact check. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you know, we do this day in and yeah. day out. You know, yeah. not much, you know. Yeah, no, I'm not going to argue. We saw this all friends. 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 We saw this all talking now? That was good, right? Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> Yeah, this is based on what we just said. Matthew 18, verses, let me start at verse 1. At the same time came the disciple unto Yahweh Shai, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Yahweh Shai called the little child unto him and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted mm -hmm. and become as little children, mm -hmm. ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Based on what the brother was just saying, that's good. What I was actually looking for, but it all plays out, is how we have to come as basically new body, new mind, right? Mm -hmm. You gotta empty that old wine that you learned, uh, and your cup has to be empty, right? Because if you had a wine, because the more wine since it ages, it tastes better, right? Better quality. But if you pour a fresh wine in, you can dilute it back down. Right. Uh -huh. right? So you gotta right. take out that old wine, uh -huh. right? And get a whole fresh yeah. bottle in representing this knowledge. You gotta come back as an actual child relearning the truth of these scriptures. Uh -huh. Like I mentioned before, the scriptures say, search out the way of your father. You can only do that by coming into this book right here. Right? right? Like nothing is wrong with the fact that you had certain names, like you got knowledge, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like you got knowledge, you broke down the gold, yeah, yeah, you know, the yeah. names were closed, but now it's time yeah. to just get yeah, a little yeah. bit more understanding, get that much further too. Yeah. Like the bro was saying, yeah. you just gotta study. Yeah. That's so, all so, so, so my, my last thing I'll say for that, you have to run. Yeah, okay. So, all right. it, it, so, so, like, when I read, like, the story of a well, parable of, of the sheep and the goats, you know, I, I, you probably read it already, though, you know. But the, 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 way, the way I basically break it down is, is, is this. You know, so, so, so he said, you know, those, those on my left, you know, the goats, they're people who went to church and raised their hands, 
praise God, you know, and, and, but, but then he says, you know, you saw the hungry and didn't feed them, you saw the naked and didn't clothe them, you know, get out of here. You know, they thought they were gone because they went to church and they recognized God. Those on the right are people who fed the hungry, you know, clothed the naked, didn't go to church, didn't raise their hands to say praise God, but he's like, you saw me naked and clothed me, you saw me hungry and fed me, come into my glory. And so he doesn't he does make it sound like you have to you have to even go to church, much less know his right name. But because he noticed you caring for your fellow human being, he says, come into my glory. Now you mentioned those on the right. Who are the sheep that so, salvation so, so, is for? Well, the one on the right are the sheep. Who, so, who are they? So so, so the, the way the parable goes, basically, is basically these people didn't recognize Jesus in any way, didn't recognize God, but they, they cared for people. And because they cared and fed the hungry, visited the imprisoned, clothed the naked, he says, you know, even though you didn't recognize me, I recognize you. Come on in because you got a preset, did, brother. You know, so so what he says basically okay. is, he is that person he, who is hungry and naked and imprisoned and whatever. You're close. You're, 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 you're close. You're close. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll explain more. Yeah. Yeah. This is very important. I got all of us. Yeah, it says Hebrews chapter 6, no, no, Hebrews chapter 5 and 12. For when the time he ought to be teachers, he have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of the Most High. You have to be taught again. Everything we've learned from a child up until this time. If we have it, we see yeah. what we just have, man. We have to be taught again, yeah. okay? And you have to be taught by the correct teachers. Uh, and they're out there, yeah. okay? Like I said, you don't have to fact check. Uh, the correct teachers out here on the highway uh, you know? Uh, so, yeah. we out here every weekend. We come yeah. out here and constantly be at yeah. But you have to listen. Yeah. What you got, brother? Yeah, uh, it was stemming off what this brother said. You got to be born again. Everything you learn in the world is, is garbage. Uh -huh. So being born again is being subject under the authority of the word, uh -huh. which is being taught by the men of the Lord. Uh -huh. this. So this is Sirach 32, verse 8. Let thy speech be short, uh -huh. comprehending much in few words. Uh -huh. Be as one that knoweth and yet hold his tongue. Uh, if thou be among great men, uh, make not thyself equal with them. And when ancient men are in place, use not many words. Uh, well, this brother hit it spot uh, on through the spirit. Uh, Become as a child. Uh -huh. A child is subject to everything you say. Right. So that's why a lot of guys go off. They think I got this. Uh -huh. I'm 60 years old. But yeah. all they've been taught is lies for right. 40 years. Uh -huh. So they come up here and they don't know the whole Bible. Uh -huh. So they start talking more than listening. Right. So that goes back to, uh, I think it's Ecclesiastes 5. Uh, Keep yeah. thy foot when thou goest into the house of the Lord, but just where two or more are gathered. This, uh -huh. You're in the right, sanctuary right, right. Right, right. 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 right now. We live and breathe the word, not to right. sound boastful, but right. this is all we right. do. Right. Right. Day in yeah. and day out. Uh -huh. Yeah. So that's it. So yep. that's right. So, so what? what? So hold on, hold on, hold on. We got to correct that. Okay. And I'm gonna let you. Okay. okay. I want to right. question. Okay. Cool. One. Well, we got to break down that parable right. the right way first, because we got people okay. watching on YouTube. Mm -hmm. All right. Go ahead. Read that real quick. Cut that on thirty four. Yep. This is the book of Saint Matthew, chapter twenty five, and we'll start at verse thirty four. We'll break it down quick. Can you read your question? Verse thirty four. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. Right, so first it's giving us a hint right there uh -huh. who it's talking about. Uh -huh. Those on the right side, it says, Come, inherit the kingdom. Uh -huh. Right? Or, inherit the, uh, it says, Come ye, blessed of my father. Blessed of my father, right? Mm -hmm. blessed, of, yeah, blessed of my father, uh -huh. inherit the kingdom prepared for you. So it doesn't, it says, Inherit the kingdom. Yeah, who is the kingdom actually prepared for? That's what you have to ask yourself. Right. Now we're going to give you an overall, um, um, what is the word I'm saying? Summation of, of the Bible. Uh -huh. The Bible is a history book of the world from the perspective of the Hebrew Israelites. Okay. 
It goes and talks about the covenant that the heavenly father made with the nation of Israel, how he put us in captivity, yeah. free captivity, and then eventually we didn't know the names, we had no knowledge, and now in these end days we've been raised by the Holy Spirit and we're coming back to the heavenly father by believing on his son. Yeah. Right? So now you see us prophesying out here to gather or to, to, to preach to the elect yeah. house. With all that being said, the kingdom of heaven was always destined and created for the nation of Israel. Yeah. The other nations will be in the kingdom of heaven, but right now we're referring to actual salvation, the way we're getting it. Right? So those blessed on the right hand are the nation of Israel, and specifically the elect. It's not everybody on this sign is going to make it to the kingdom of heaven by way of these saints getting saved. Only one third of the nation of Israel is going to receive salvation. That's what this is talking about right here. Let's keep going. It says, uh, let's see. It says, uh, from the foundation of the world, for I was in hunger and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. Naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. Right, so obviously, as you we know, we're not physically like helping you. Right, right. You don't need our help. You're on the right hand of the heaven. Right, right. All right, go ahead. It says, Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? The king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, and as much as he hath done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, he hath done it unto me. So there was a key word in there. You know what the key word is? Brethren? It's the least. As much as he's done it unto one of the least of these my brethren. It's referring to the elect right there. Uh, it's referring to those that aren't looked at to be prestigious in this world. Uh, but then we're looked at right now as a lower society. Right. Like specifically our people, right. the so-called black, Spanish, Native Americans, but even how much more us. Uh, we out here with Bibles in our hand. It's a Saturday. It's cold out here. Yeah. People are looking at us like we're stupid. Uh, right? right? But what we're doing is we're feeding one another. Right. We're giving each other drinks. Right? right? We're right. clothing each other by teaching these words. Right? right? By feeding our people this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. So by doing that, then it's given an analogy, it's a spiritual analogy uh -huh. saying, because you're doing these works of mine, and can aid the will of myself, like the Lord, then you've done it unto me. Right? So the Lord is saying, hey, you're out there teaching, you're prophesying, you're throwing up prayers, you're doing that for me. I like that. So that's what that's talking about. It's not really talking about the church. Okay. Although, like right. I said, you were close because no. we're not supposed to be in the church right, right. now. No, right. no, no, that's what you want to teach them about Jesus. Once we're righteous, you gotta, you gotta right. listen, you gotta listen. Remember, we got two okay. ears right. for a reason. Okay. Yeah. Right? Okay. So, exactly. I'm gonna let you speak. But it's not talking specifically yeah. about the church, although you can use that as an example to expound upon maybe that person. But it's more so going into us teaching this word and doing the word of the Father so that we can have to do it on the end of the film that we're going to yeah, yeah. So, so I, I guess when I was free, and then I'm going to yeah, yeah. This is the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16, verse 26. That thy children, O Lord, whom thou lovest, might know that it is not the growing of fruits that nourishes man, but it, it, but that it is, but that it is thy word which preserveth them that put their trust yeah. in thee. Yeah. 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 So the word is preserving us. Yeah. It's like you eat something and it has nutrients. Uh, I just literally made a yeah. video about it. Yeah. So like you eat something, it gets nutrients, you get the minerals, yeah. the vitamins. That's what this word is doing. Right. So we're feeding our people. And what? Lord's will, they're raised up. You're yeah. like raised, we get the fuck out of here. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Anyway, it's just yeah. Question, yeah. So, yeah, so, 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 so just, just to be clear, you know, I, I would say basically that the way it, the parable sounds to me is like, doing good things, even if you're not part of the church, you still get to win. No, 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 that's, that's not true, that's not true. Because if there's an old lady, yeah. and I walk her across the street, is that going to lead to me to salvation? It's not, it's not that one act. No, it doesn't, bro. I mean, a, a so, life so, on life so, no, so no, 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 that's not true, it doesn't say that. Because yeah. what's good is yeah. doing the will of the Heavenly Father, yeah. Romans 12. 
them in real quick, bro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Romans 12 and 1. Be, we, have, we have to define what it means yeah. to do good. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. if that's the point in which you think that parable yeah. is talking about, yeah. then what good acts yeah. are now going to lead to salvation? Yeah. Because that's what I want to know. Yeah. Right? But you, what, it, what do I have to do to receive salvation to be delivered? That's yeah. the most important thing. Because yeah. if I go to a soup shop and I'm uh, feeding the homeless, the uh, most high looking down at me said, ah, I'm going to deliver that man. Uh, no. He wants yeah. us to do his will. What's the will of the Father? Yeah, right. What's yeah. the will of the Father? Right. I'm yeah, asking so, that question. Yeah, so you know that there, there what's, is what's the will of the Father? What is the will of the what's, Father? What's the will of, uh, of the well, Father and his son? Life is many faceted. So, so, so what, what Give me a precept, man. No, no, no. Give me a precept. Parents, parenthood. You, you know the Bible. Give yeah. me a precept. Give me a precept. What's the will of the Father? What, what is the will of the Father? What's the will so, of the so, Son? So I think you're, you're supposed to basically study God's You said I again. I got to cut you off. Go ahead read the scripture. Nah, because no. now you have to do more listening. Yeah, okay. You have to, bro. Okay. You have to. Okay. And I'm doing this yeah. because I generally want you to get it. Read yeah. Romans 12. Yeah, this is the book of Romans 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. Yeah. What does the word beseech me, bro? Uh, you know? implore. Implore. Basically, you strongly urge. Is that yes, right. implore? Right. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, right. that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, right. holy, acceptable. Which is your reasonable service. Right, so right, right now we're presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice because, as you know, the son of the heavenly father, he died. Yeah. And the most high raised him back up. Right? So now the servant ain't greater than the master. So now we have to spiritually die. Yeah. Which means what? We're, we're giving our life right, right now. Right, right. We're out here teaching the highways and byways. Like I already said, it's cold as hell. Yeah. Where we come out literally every single Saturday. Yeah, right? I know. Now it's going to tell you why we're doing it in right. the next verse. Go ahead. And be not conformed to this world, but, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good, that good, and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High. Right, that's why we're out here, because we're doing the will of the Heavenly Father. What's good is offering your body as a living sacrifice. It's not doing good deeds. So you got to define what good is. Like everybody talking about, oh, you got to love one another. Okay, well, what is the need to love you? Don't just say it, then they go, oh, it's an action word. Well, what's the action, bro? Right. Like you got to explain these words. Like don't just say certain things. So it's not about just doing something that's good. It's about doing the will of the heavenly father and his son. We were told to do something. The Lord is looking for obedience right now. Right. That's the main thing our people are yeah. always missing. Yeah. Because disobedient, saddest ass children. Yeah. That's why we went into captivity over and over. And guess what? We're fucking tired of that. We're tired of sin. Don't nobody want to keep sinning over right. and over and going into captivity again. It's time to do the will and be obedient unto the Lord. So that's why we're out here right now. Alright, we got a question. Yeah, yeah. Alright, one more question, bro. Give me a question. This is very important for a lot of us. It says, this is Ecclesiastes 5 and 1. Okay. Well, I spoke about it earlier. It says, keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of the Most High, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice and food. Well, they consider not. They do. Right, so you gotta remember, yeah. they're literally, bro, I'm telling you this seriously, they're literally at an altar right now. Uh -huh. This is gotcha. an altar. Gotcha. Now, you understand what an altar means, the yeah. significance of it, according to the, the Levitical priesthood. Yeah. Yeah. Right, the sons of Aaron, they go in there, they offer yeah. the sacrifice for themselves uh -huh. and the people. This right now is an altar. We're living, we're giving our bodies as a living sacrifice. And the Lord is well pleased with what we're doing. Now, let me go a little bit deeper into that. Because we're out here to teach our people. We want questions. But we're not here to be preached to. I'm saying that in so much humility right now. Because I want you to get it, bro. And I want everybody on YouTube to get it too. So ask your question. Okay. And, you know, if, okay. you, if you want to explain something, yeah, sure. Yeah. But then yeah. when it comes to us having yeah. to be explained yeah. to you, you got to be more ready to yeah. hear. Yeah. Than to give a sacrifice yeah. of the food. Yeah. And that's what that's talking about. Okay. Right there. Okay. Now, we'll let the master not even tell you if you got a question. Speak up, man. John 21, let's start at verse 15. Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? 
saith unto me, Yeah, Lord, y'all know that I love you, uh -huh. right? And he said unto him, Feed my lambs. Uh -huh. Verse 16, he said to me again the second time, Simon, the son of Jonas, love is down me. He said unto him, Yeah, Lord, y'all know that I love you. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, verse 17, he said unto him the third time, Simon, the son of Jonas, love is down me. Peter was grieved because he had said unto him the third time, love is down me. And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou know that I love thee. How shall I say that to him? Be my sheep. Uh -huh. So, you know, uh -huh. Uh -huh. I don't know how the Bible is breaking the Uh huh. Right, I got you. I got you. Keep your voice up. I bet. I don't know how the Bible is receiving the Lord's sake. The scripture says it's rock swallowed. Right. Now you're supposed to uh, know who's good. Yeah. You're saying that you're the Lord's the Lord's good. But you also have to strive to do it by the So you can't do good to everybody. Yeah, right, right, right. Yes. Right, and, and actually, you know, that that's a perfect preface to my question. Okay, go ahead. So, so, so my question basically is this: so, you know, living in this area for now eight, almost eighteen years, I've seen various uh, the the black ears and whites who I realize are not the same. They're, they're they're very different. How they carry themselves. <laughs> and, 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 you know, and I, I see it, you know, other, other Christian groups will have. So, my question is this. Not just for me, you know, I, I've, got, I've got a pretty deep religious mythical upbringing, but anyway, for anybody who's coming by here, and they hear you, and they hear the black ears and whites, and they hear the Methodists, the, the Catholics, the whoever. Now, what is it about your teachings that's going to stand out to them in such a way that they're going to say, that's the group? It, it ain't about our teachings. It first, what is that? First, because one, first and foremost, also did first John, what is that? First John 2 and 21. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, whoever got that, the other one is first John 2 and 21. So first and foremost, it's about teaching the truth. And then second, if you speak the truth, it's the Lord drawing church people in. Uh -huh. right? It's not the way we bring it out. It's not because we say it and we're such eloquent in our speech. It ain't right, nothing right, like that. Right. It's because you're speaking the truth yeah. and the Lord draws in the people who do that So, don't get that. The uh, first Corinthians 3, I'm going to start at verse 5. Then it's Paul, and he was the father. The minister is by whom we So who then is Shammah? Who is Shamaria? And that's the base beast man. Who is y'all? That's me. We ain't nobody. Lord could have raised up anybody and have anybody in our place. Uh -huh. Like, it don't got right. to be me. Someone else could be right, right here teaching. Right. right? But I'm grateful we're all blessed to be here. Go ahead. Okay. Even as the Lord gave to every man. And a minister is just someone that serves. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing while we're teaching. Go ahead. Verse 6. I have planted a pole of water. Right, so this brother was, was speaking. I was reading. Uh -huh. Go ahead. But the most high gave the increase. So the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, he's the one that actually expounds right upon that person's mind and he subs with them. Mm -hmm. And he gives them the actual knowledge. Mm -hmm. It ain't because we saw you walking across uh -huh. the street and you saw us preaching. And we're like, oh, yeah. and he was like, oh my gosh, that person. Now maybe on a physical level. But what's happening spiritually is uh -huh. the most high is uh -huh. saying, oh, you know what? I want to draw that person in. Uh -huh. Let me make him stop. Uh -huh. So an angel came and made you stop. It okay. made you listen. It okay. made you come okay. in here and converse with him. Okay. Yeah. It's not because we're actually right. saying something that's so right. different than everybody. Yeah. But it is also about having 100% truth right. according to the knowledge that right. was given. Right. So let's get first John real quick. Good segue. You said, how do, how do other people know or well, what distinguishes this group, Great Millstone, uh -huh. from any other group? Look at this, brother. Uh -huh. Great Millstone is known for talking about prophecy. Uh -huh. Okay, so let me go back to it. It timed out. That's the devil, because I had it up there for a while. Uh -huh. Great Millstone goes into prophecy. That's happening right now. Uh -huh. So this is what they're pushing uh -huh. on a global scale. Uh -huh. So this is one of the distinguishing marks of Great Millstone. Oh. Talking about what's happened in real time. Uh -huh. So no other groups are pushing this heavy uh -huh. daily uh -huh. other than Great Millstone. Uh -huh. Okay, uh -huh. so Great Millstone 
are comprised yeah. of most of the men of the Lord that's pushing prophecy. Uh -huh. Right here. You know what this is? Uh -huh. uh, what, what, what's this? Come close if you got to see it. So they're using medical oh, oh. martial law. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, that's yeah, why yeah. they're collapsing the system, the yeah. economy. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, what is yeah. that real quick? What is that? Uh, so it's like like the implant, so it's an empty track you. Uh huh. Uh huh. But 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 dig my question though. What is that, brother? Yeah. Like like what the market beast. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, right. Carlo. Thank you. You know what I'm saying. So, so this. Quick, you. Because it segues into. Woo. <laughs> okay. First John two and twenty. That ye have an unction from the Holy One, mm -hmm. and ye know. All things. Right, so it's not saying that I can break down an atom and another body. We have 100% knowledge of all things that lead to salvation. That's all that's necessary. The knowledge can lead to eternal life. And like the brother said, it's a great segue because that goes into prophecy. And speaking about prophecy, which is the main thing that we should be talking about. You know, what is the mark? Right. Right. Once I these wars and rumors of wars, these pestilences, all of these things happen. In the world, how does that tie in um, to the scriptures? Uh -huh. And that's all the things that give us the understanding of the end days. Right. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so uh, I'd rather stop my phone about twenty-five times. <laughs> Oh, but with that said, uh -huh. um, I think this, this might actually edify you to, just to, to know that you know there, a lot of times I pass by you know a, 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 a group. I mean, not 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 just you. I'm saying I mean I pass by without ever stopping for certain types of people, and there, there, there's a reason why I besides being pulled by the Holy Spirit, just from my human perspective, you know. I I don't like to just go to a, like a church where all they want to do is get on an emotional high and scream and shout, you know. And I'm not into churches where they they just want to tell you what you want to hear, so you put money in the offering. Okay. Place. My thing is to talk to people that want to talk to you. And one of the main things that stands out to me is this: when you're not just trying to talk about God being a Santa Claus God, do the sweet things and. The reason for the problems in the world is because nobody's loving each other. You know, Check I'm, this out, brother. You know, not to cut you off. Yeah, right. The reason why you stop. You yeah. This is I mean, I, I, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just saying. No, you know. I understand. I understand. Yeah. You know, we get you know, for it. Yeah. This is John 10 and 27. Uh -huh. It says, My sheep mm -hmm. hear my voice. Uh -huh. right. And I know them, and they follow me. Yeah. Right. So like the brothers were saying earlier, yeah. you, did, you, did, you just didn't stop here as a professor. Right, right, right. 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 Okay, so by you coming out here, you're getting any prize. So, John, keep coming out here. Yeah. Okay? So, you definitely learn and be edified. Okay? I got you. Because we see you have a seal without a voice. Okay? Come out here. Trust me. Every week, come out here. Yeah. 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 Jeremiah 10, verse 23. Oh, Lord. I know that the way of man is not in himself. Mm. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. Mm. So the Lord made you come up, you know, okay. think over and over. Okay, I got you now. All right, all right. Well, I, I think we have to run. She called me like 30 times so far. Shalom, man. All right, man. That's peace in the Hebrew. Shalom. All right. All right.
B and Z. You know, like for example, you think you're gonna wear a white tee, you end up wearing a black one. Wear How you good? Oh, oh, you can think about wearing a white white shoe. Oh, you know, I go back and do it all the time. So even right. so 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 like that, you think that you can buy the way things are gonna go a certain way. The plan, whether it's a day ahead, two weeks ahead, three years ahead, you will have twenty year plans. But the Lord is the one that eventually decides what's gonna happen when you see that. That's right. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 34 verse 16 and it reads seek ye out of the book of the Lord your house and read no one of these shall fail none shall want its mate for my mouth it hath commanded and his spirit it hath gathered him that's what led that brother up here the spirit of the word of the Lord's mouth. This is the word coming out. I got a precept to piggyback off that. This is John 6 and 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh, profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So this is like a harmony, a song where the Lord's sheep is taking heed to the piper. They're being by pipe back into the covenant. Well, this is a spiritual harmony that's going now. A new song. That's right. So being returned, seek him mm -hmm. ten times more. Mm -hmm. and, and, that, and that really goes to anybody that comes up here and leaves with a different understanding of the scriptures. You know, as it was your mind to go astray, as it was your mind to think that, oh, I got this, I know exactly what to do. You know, uh, what's it called? I know, uh, what's it called? I know the scriptures. You know, being led astray, basically. Now that you know, seek him ten times more. You know, in the right way, in the scriptural way. You have the names which is our, uh, which is uh, which is uh, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. You know, you know what tribe you come from. Uh, yeah, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. You know what tribe you come from. Uh, whether it be Judah, Benjamin, Levi, all the way down to Issachar. Now that you know who you are and who your power is, seek them ten times more. You know, because that, those are the only names that we're going to be able to get salvation. From. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's the book of uh, Sirach 43, verse 30. When you glorify the Lord, Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, exalt him 
as much as he can. Mm. Or even yet, will he far exceed, and when ye exalt him, put forth all your strength, and be not weary, for ye can never go far enough. Never go far enough. These names, these names, these, these names, they, the difference between these names and the names that he can find in the world, which is Yahweh, uh, what's it called, Yahuwah, Yeshua, all these different, uh, all these different, uh, Transliterations or different uh, ways that you think you can say the Most High's name, you know, they have, you know, they don't have the power that the names Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai, uh, why Yahweh Shai does, you know, and that's why we have to exalt that name to its fullest extent. Though these are the names that are going to be going to be able to deliver us from our captivity. You know, Yahweh Shai, call that back again, bro. Huh? This is the Book of Sirach, chapter forty-three, verse thirty from the top. When you glorify Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Exalt him as much as ye can, for even yet will he far exceed, and when ye exalt him, put forth all your strength, and be not weary, for ye can never go far enough. <laughs> That's why the scriptures say pray without ceasing, you know? That's why the scriptures say pray without ceasing. We have to give it our all, we have to give it our all and constantly call upon the name Jehovah by Yahweh God, you know, Yahweh by Yahweh Shah, by Yahweh you know, and able to get the things that were pro uh, promised uh, to us from Abraham, Isaac, all the way down to Jacob, which are the names that we're going to get salvation from. So we have to go as hard as we can. That we have a great high priest mm -hmm. that is passed into the heavens. The house shine, the sun is high. Let us hold past our confession. Verse 15. For we have not an high priest who cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmity, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of peace. Okay. Hebrews 4, I'm going to start at verse 14. See then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens. The house shines in the whole time. Let us hold fast our confession. That fast our confession is what we're doing right here. This is the work of the Lord. You know, coming out onto the highways and byways, preaching out to us. Day to day life, you know, whether it's these spiritual things or carnal things, 
or is going to be the eventual outcome of what's going to happen. Uh, verse 16, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time for need. Let us come boldly. You see, uh, you see us out here. We're, stand, we're standing in great boldness. We, 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 we're, there's a there's a face to the name. There's a face to the voice that that is calling out to these people. You know, we're not we're not we're not in uh, we're not in the house. We're not uh, put, uh, uh, putting our candle uh, hiding our candle under a bushel. If you can get that scripture in Matthew chapter uh, six, I got a precept why uh, you were speaking for us. We we didn't choose him. He chose us. John chapter fifteen, verse sixteen, and it reads. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. It you. Well, through the Spirit, you can't just go and just say, okay, I choose the Most High to be my Savior. He put the spirit in you. He picked to select you to come. His sheep will hear his voice. He picked you and ordained you to do such. It's not like he's sitting there lonely and needs somebody to come and, and help him out and please select me. No, he select you. And he knew you before the birth in, in a womb. He knew, you, he knew you in the womb. You know, the Lord, the Lord knows exactly who wants to choose to, call, uh, to give his secrets to. To, uh, to call, call, out, call out on his name and actually to get salvation. He knows who the saints are. He knows who the ones to the 44,000 are. You know, it's really just up to how I was called. Them being built up to that point to where they get they get the living, you know? Uh, brother, you had, uh, you had something that you wanted to get? Uh, it's a precept to land back off of the brothers. The second Thessalonians 2, 13 and 14, it says, but we are bound to give thanks always to the Howard for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because the Howard Shemyawashai had from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the attaining of the glory of our Lord, the Howard Shemyawashai. So through this truth is how we're going to get the blessings and the grace that the blessings going into. Go ahead and pick back up, brother. Yeah, I had a preset, I'll pick it back. I think you wanted to go to Romans. Well, make yourself a bunch of sacrifices. Yeah. Okay. So I got one here, 1 Peter 4 and 1. For as much then as the Mashiach have suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. Or he that have suffered in the flesh have ceased from sin. But that's a part of making our bodies a living sacrifice. We gotta suffer in the flesh and not live in the lasciviousness of life or ways of the world. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. Yeah, that was 1 Peter chapter 4. I'll go ahead and go to verse 3. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walk in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. So this connects back to, um, to Ephesians 2 and 11. Ye were Gentiles in the lust of the flesh. So this is when we were looked upon as not a people, but are counted as the heathen. So now we're being cleaned up, washed up, reshaped, reformed, to be brought back into the Lord's house, the sanctuary, to be a people. Yeah, actually, and, it, and it goes back to the scripture that we also read. That's, that's, all, that's yes. all the things that we've been, that we actually did in the world, you know, all, we got to keep it real. You know, at, when, when we when we're in the world, we committed sins unto death. You know, we, we are, if we were judged by just the uh, what's it called, just the things that we done, if we were judged by the law, you know, we'd be put to death. You know, but that's where Yahweh Shah comes, and that's where the uh, what's it called, the, the, the grace and the covenant comes. Okay. 
Set the back you up. That's the spirit, what you just said. So this is Revelation 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of the Most High in the faith of Yahweh Shai. So faith without works is dead. So what are we doing? We're coming back to his word and we're teaching his word. So it's a fulfillment of the law, which is Keeping the will of the Most High. His word is comprised of law, statutes, and commandments. So the saints, who are the saints? The Israelites, which are the elect in these last days. Verse 13, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, right? Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the spirit that they may rest from their labor and their works do follow them. All goes back to making our bodies a living sacrifice. So that's a part of that work. We are the burnt offerings in the altar of the Lord, a sanctuary that's cleansing us, but must be cleansed before entering into his house. Six. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be called a good minister of my shadow shot. Nourish up the words of faith and put the doctrine where unto thou hast attained. Mm -hmm. So all the points for us to bring it up just goes to our test. This is what the Lord expects from us. This is what he expects from us to have. So that your sacrifices are the acceptable kind of sacrifice mm. in the mm. So everything that we do dedicated to the king. Wow. Yeah. You. Yeah, good point. Yeah. 
This is the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1. Mm -hmm. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, mm -hmm. that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, mm -hmm. holy, acceptable, unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the key point in there is what? what do that back again. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice, you know? And that, and that means constantly doing the will of Yahweh Shem Shah. You know, we, we, we do this day, uh, day in and day out. You know, it's, it's one thing to sacrifice uh, your physical life, you know, and just lay your life down and that's it. But it's another thing to constantly sacrifice going through hardships, going through adversities and trials every, every day, not knowing where the end is until we get salvation. We have to present our bodies a living sacrifice. And, 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 it's, and it's only, and it's because that's the only thing that we have to offer you, the, uh, the Heavenly Father through His Son. The only thing that we have to yep. give is really our lives. You know, we can't, we can't, uh, we can't bribe with money. We can't, we can't give anything. We can't give any of the physical possessions that we have right now or the things that he has created to him in place of our body. You know, that, that and, and what does it say it is? Holy, acceptable, unto the most high, which is your reasonable service. Which is our reasonable service. And, and that really just means it's what we ought to do, you know? It's reasonable. It's just right. You know, it's the only thing that we really have to do to be able to get that salvation and the promises that he's promised us all the way down from Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, you know? Now, uh, just to look up, uh, short points, what's it going to mention that it's a sacrifice? Because what you do, when you sacrifice the sheep, it's an all time thing. All the time, when you sacrifice, it's an ongoing thing until you get delivered. Yeah, this is the book of first, uh, so it's like it's 2 Timothy chapter 2, starting off in verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness mm. as a good soldier yeah. of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. No man that war entangle himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who mm. have chosen him to be a soldier. That's right. Come, this is the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2, from the top, verse 3. Thou therefore. Endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Endure well, hardness as a good soldier of Hamashiach Yahweh Shah. These are the things that we're going to have to go through being in this faith, being in this ministry, being in this church. We're going to have to endure hardness. You know, this this is the, this is that narrow and straight gate. You know, the, the path the path is going to be difficult. You know, but you know what? No man that war entangle himself with the affairs of this life, yeah. that he may please him. Who have chosen him to be a soldier? Uh, right. we can't, meaning we can't have any attachments in this world. You know, we can't we can't have any attachments, entanglements, anything that 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 can be used to take us out of this thing. You know, and it, and it's been and we, it's been done to multiple men. We've seen it before. You know, and it can even happen to us. But we're praying and we're constantly fighting that spiritual battle, so we stay in this faith, stay in this truth, and stay in this ministry, stay in the body, really. You know, and and that's why the brotherhood is really so important. You know, because we're all, because we're all we we really have to be able to uh, sustain us and be able to keep us in the right mindset and and in the right spirit. You know, some brothers, some brothers are at ninety percent, some brothers are at ten percent, some brothers are at fifteen percent. But it all balances out because next week a brother may be at eighty percent, brother may be at fifty. You know, it, it, it all balances out. You know. Not nah, because, like you said, those, those attachments are going to get some people killed out here. Like, as an example, let's just say you have a wife, you got two kids. Now, your wife, let's say all hell breaks loose, and she like, oh, babe, we got to eat. So she takes a chip. She makes her the two children take a chip. You going to take that shit now? All because you love your children, you love your wife? That's why this group is talking about you got to love the Heavenly Father more. You got to hate your children, hate your wife. Yes. Right? Because if you attach too much to them, you got attached to the Heavenly Father, your ass is done. Good you know man. what's crazy? I'm glad you said this.
Oh yeah. Yep. Yep. Verse 3. Blessed be the, the most high and father of our Lord, Taosha and Mashiach, which, according to his abundant mercy, has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Mashiach and from the dead. Verse 4. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you. Of that scripture. Verse 5. Who are kept by the power of the Most High through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Verse 6. Bring ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through many poor temptations. Verse 7. At the trial of your faith, be much, much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, but be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearance of the Lashiach and Al-Shah. We're getting tried to refine this gold right now. This is our fire trial right now. You know, living, uh, what's it called? Living in Babylon, having to go through these multiple uh, problems. Multiple temptations. You know, we're living in Babylon. We're going through these multiple problems. We're going through these multiple problems. Multiple temptations and situations that, you know, that, that would cause many men to fall to. You know? But, how about Shun Yahweh Shai, you know, Lord's blood had it slighted for us to make, be able to go through this place, where, where, uh, which is the land of confusion, which is the land, uh, which is the place where a lot of people go astray, where a lot of people live alternative lifestyles that are completely contrary to the uh, scriptures, and keep uh, and keep us in the right spirit all the way up until the, we're delivered, you know. But that, but the, the trial is still going to be fiery, you know. They're still going to have to. Uh, you're still going to have spiritual losses and uh, what's it called spiritual wins spiritual wins and spiritual losses you're going to have physical wins and physical losses you know but the, the end of love is going to be getting delivered into that uh, what's it called delivered into the kingdom you know sorry i got a precept brother while you getting that and this ties back into what this brother just said this is how we know the spirit is in the midst of us this is book of Matthew, chapter 10. I'm going to go to verse 26. Let's go to 25. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his Lord. So we have to suffer the same manifold temptations as our Lord and Savior. Verse, it is enough for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? So we want to be despised by our own household and hated, by our wives, our children, by our neighbors, friends, co-workers. Matthew 10 and 26. Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. Mm. So everybody is being discerned in these last days, the wicked, the faithful, the righteous. So the word is a separator, a sifter, a divider, the clean from the unclean. Matthew 10, verse 27. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light, and what ye hear, in the ear that preach ye upon the housetops we're speaking out in public we're utilizing the world wide web we're hitting the streets the chief place of concourse verse 28 this is where i wanted to go matthew 10 and 28 fear them not therefore excuse me matthew 10 and 28 and fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So we got to resist the temptation of family members, of the government that's going to mandate this new device, that's going to mandate these government statutes that everybody's going to have to take to see him. 
So we're not fearing what man can do to us in this body. But the Most High, the creator of spirits and the father of spirits that can destroy us and make our souls suffer persecution and torment on the earth. That's all I have, a lot. This is uh, Proverbs 1, start at verse 19. So are the ways of everyone that is... This is Proverbs 1, verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fools despise wisdom and destruction. Fear them, uh, fear them that can uh, kill the body and soul and hell. You know the fear. That's why the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. This is where it all. This is where it all starts. Is fearing Yahweh Shemayahu because of the power that He presents. The power that uh, the power that Yahweh Shemayahu Shah presents is greater than anything that Esau can do, or any or any man or any man that's uh, living uh, that's living on earth. You know. Because he's the only power that can kill the body and soul in hell. You know, the, uh, what's it called? The power that Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah presents is, the, is a power that is able to destroy you and also a power that is able to deliver you from anything that anybody in this world who believes they have power to do. You know? It's the book of Ecclesiastes, also known as Sirach, chapter 1, to back up what the brother saying, uh, verse 14. The fear of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. Is the beginning of wisdom, and it was created with the faithful in the womb. Oh, I was thinking about that. Created with the faithful in the womb. You know, and that goes back to Jeremiah. He knew thee in the womb. You know, yeah, what was it called? The, 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 the fear of the Lord is a gift that was given to us even in the womb. You know, and that and that really ultimately goes back to faith. faith the faith of gift was ultimately given unto those that He has chosen. You know, and hopefully we be of those men uh, that, that we continue in this thing all, all the way into the end. You know, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai has given us that gift of faith and fear in him to be able to get, uh, get delivered and be uh, hopefully of that number. Uh, it's also benefits uh, coming with fear of the Lord. Uh, this is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 34, um, verse 13, and up to verse 17. The spirit of those that fear Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai shall live. For their hope is in him that saveth them. Whoso feareth Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah shall not fear nor be afraid, for he is his hope. Blessed is the soul of him that feareth the Lord. To whom doth he look? And who is his strength? For the eyes of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah are upon them that love him. He is their mighty protection and strong stay. A defense from heat, and a cover from the sun at noon, and a preservation from stumbling, and a help from falling. Hey, read that again from the top, bro. <laughs> that, shit, that, that joint was hard. Yep. You so, know what I'm 34 from the top, verse 13. Plus, I got a question for y'all, bros, too. The what? spirit of those that fear of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, shall live, for their hope Ooh. is in him Ooh. that saveth them. Whoso feareth the Lord shall not fear nor be afraid. That verse right there, what's that, what's that talking about? Whoso feareth the Lord shall not fear. What's that mean? Hmm? I'm specifically looking for what does the, those two types of fear, what's that talking about? Because it sounds like a contradiction. Those who fear the Lord shall not fear. Like, what's that talking about? Y'all know? Way. Yeah, uh, but you gotta remember, just like how there's this is English, you know. Remember how we looked up the Greek words for world, and there are many different worlds. So you have what uh, Raj Zainala always talks about. You got the actual definition, and then you got the biblical definition. So right here, it's using the word fear twice, but it's using it in two different situations, contexts. So there's two types of fear. So them that fear the Lord shall not fear. So not fear what? It's talking about man, right? You fear the most high, meaning you have reverence for him, like you said, but then the other half is following that answer up. 
you're not going to feel what man shall do to you. Because the scriptures say that um, it says the Lord loveth, no, the Lord, um, what does it say? He hath care for his elect. That's right. right. That's because you love him and you fear him. So now when you, he's, you, you, you're, you're keeping his commandments, you're doing his will. Now, you, you don't got to fear nobody else in this goddamn world. What the fuck do we got to fear? We know the heavenly father, the man that created all these people. Why am I going to fear one of his creations? He got control over him. You know what I'm saying? So there's two different types of fear right there, depending on the context that it's referring to. You know, you got to get into those small words sometimes. You know what I'm saying? It really makes a big difference. That's why I wanted you to read that again. Let me get this one real quick. It's uh, Isaiah chapter 41, verse 13. <laughs> He's already <laughs> feeling it. Yeah. Fear not, thou warm Jacob, mm. and you men of Israel, I will help thee to see a body of power, mm. and thy redeemer, the holy one of Israel. Yeah, because it's not saying, it says fear not, I shall help you. It's not saying don't fear me. No, 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 you still yeah. fear me. Yeah. That's what it's saying. That's right. But you don't fear man, right? Because the Lord got your back. That's yeah. what it's coming down to. You got to keep that notion and that mentality in these days moving forward. But it's about getting that right now, though. Right? You're not going to all of a sudden, in the time of Jacob's trouble, be like, oh, I fear the Lord. It don't work like that. Now you fear the Lord, that shit is actually happening and breaking down. No, 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 no. You must fear the Lord now. So that in that time, he shall help you. Thou worm Jacob. Right? Well, King David agree with you. So I got a precept. I'm going to read from Psalms 118. This brother is just spot on. The book of Psalms, chapter 118, verse 4. Let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endure forever. Mm. I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. So we're trusting in his everlasting power. He controls life, death, sickness, health. So man does not dictate our entire well-being or spirituality. So he's calling on the Lord in distress, in trouble. Psalms 118, see, verse six. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what man can do unto me. There it is. That's it. It's the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 23, verse 19. Such a man only fear the eyes of men, and knoweth not that the eyes of the Lord, Yahweh, are 10,000 times brighter than the sun, beholding all the ways of men and considering the most secret parts. technology Esau can ever put inside of us, right. you know? Whatever, whatever you think Esau got that, uh, what's it called, that, uh, what's it called, got that you fear, uh, that, that that you will put fear in him, just know that Yahweh Shem Yahweh's power is 10,000 times greater than that. It's actually normal, you know, how much greater the power Yahweh Shem Yahweh has. He gave them, the, uh, they, he gave them the gift to be able to, uh, uh, to perform their craft, you know? The creator of them, uh, the uh, creator of the good and the wicked, you know. So that's how you, uh, that's how you know Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai is really the ultimate power that you're supposed to be uh, uh, fear and reverence, not any man that can show any power before you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shai, you got to preach that. Huh? It's the Book of Job, 34, verse 21 and 22. For his eyes are upon the ways of man, and he seeth all his goings. There is no darkness nor shadow of death with the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. They can't hide, they can't hide themselves. Actually, they're, they're, they're being made bare right now. You know, this, there were certain things that Esau could do before, uh, beforehand, 
you know, and, and what's it called? And so-called get away with it, even in the even in the eyes of men. But now they can't get away with those things anymore. You know? But the, the, how about Shimiao Shai is exposing who the wicked are and he's exposing who the righteous are, you know? Day in and day out, and it, and, and 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 that's all a part of prophecy. That's all the, uh, the things that have been spoken before time. You know that uh, uh, that these things were going to happen. You know. This Job chapter eight verse twenty. Behold, how we have passed away perfect men. Neither will he help the mm. Job chapter 8 verse 20. Behold, the power will not cast away a perfect man. Neither will he help the evil Jews. their resting place and that's what's going to happen. They're stressed out and they have a solution to their problems. But why? Because the so-called leaders will let them know what they need to do according to the scriptures. And then uh, this is what the enemy is saying in the so-called leaders. Verse 6 and verse 7. All that found them have devoured them. And the adversary said, we offend not. Because they have sinned against the law, your hour, the habitation of justice, yeah. even your hour, the hope of your fathers. So the elite can have an excuse to sit on the other side of the side. And the Lord said, What? He's angry with the wicked every day. So they have no clue for their sins. So Got precept piggyback on. Brother was speaking earlier, stating that um, we should fear the Most High instead of man. Uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 31. And it reads, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Mm. And we shouldn't fear man. The Most High, the Bible, Bible should be our side, control both sides, the right and the left. Romans chapter 8, verse 30. Romans chapter 8, verse 29. Yeah. And it reads, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So what's, what's sweet about this deal is that they're uh, predestinate. Yeah. So there's no such thing as free will. So we have the cheat sheets. We know how the story is going to end. 
Passover, we know the Most High is going to save his elect, his saints. And there's no reason to fear what Esau is getting ready to do next. But we know how the story ends. Verse 30, and it reads, Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. In whom he called, them he also justified. In whom he justified, them he also glorified. So he's not going to destroy the essence of his own spirit that he has already dispensed out to his chosen ones that are anointed with, with oil of understanding. He's not going to destroy the essence of himself, this Holy Spirit. Verse 31, once more, and it reads, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Predestiny, salvation is already predetermined. So the names of the Lord's elect are already written in the book of life. You cannot delete that number or add to that number. It's a set number sealed before the foundation of the world. Verse 32, and it reads, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? So Yahweh Shai inherited eternal glory. So the sons of the Most High is going to inherit that eternal glory. That's right, Allah, the Prince of the Power. Verse 33, yep. and it reads, Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justified. So justified and sealed by the blood of the Lamb set in stone that cannot be altered or changed. who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Hamashiach, according as he have chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoptions of children by Yahweh Hamashiach to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Yeah, you can read verse four one more time. God, verse four to the, from the top. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Yeah, so that if anybody asks you if, there, if there's such thing as free will, you can just go to Ephesians, uh, the first chapter. That, that cuts it out, uh, that debunks that right there. Go ahead. That we should be holy and without blame before him. Yeah, love. The, what matches that is uh, Revelation the 14th chapter where it talks about the virgins that they didn't have any guile in their mouth. That's that's exactly uh, that's what the elect has. Even if the elect is bugging out or doing some crazy stuff right now, eventually they're going to come in and, and be counted to be uh, virgins no matter how wicked it was being in their life. Keep going. Verse 5. Having predestined us Onto the adoption of the children by Yahweh Shah Hamashiach to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Right, which that matches up with Romans the ninth chapter where it says that it doesn't matter. It didn't matter if the child did any good or evil. It was according to the election, to the purpose that the election might stand for. So that also matches up and cuts out the free will is, is out the window. The Lord gave us an exact number, 144,000. Those are the first spirits that were created. Uh, from the foundation of the earth, Yahweh Shai, and then 144,000. That's why we hear scriptures about the chosen and the elect and uh, the predestinated. Verse 39, if we have the most high, you cannot overthrow it. 
Right, the so-called white man understands energy. That's why he hasn't made his move yet. That's why we're able to continue to do what we do because we have the true creator on our side, which is Yahweh in Yahweh shot. Read that from the top again. This is uh, Acts 3 from verse 38. Yeah, verse 38. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men. Right, it's best that you just stay away. Go ahead. And let them alone. Mm -hmm. For if this counsel or this work be a man, it will come to nothing. Right, so if this is just man-made, if what we're doing and what we're saying is, is man-made, it would have been stopped already. But we've been coming out here for, uh, this is going on uh, uh, 15, almost 16 years here in the, in the DC area. Then you had our elders and apostles, they've been preaching the same truth for more than 30 years, you know? So have you ever seen the Hebrew Israelites before? You ever seen us? You never seen us? Are you from America? Are you from the States? You're from the States? Oh, oh what, what country are you from? Saudi Arabia. Okay, well, yeah, the scriptures talk about Saudi Arabia. Uh, Saudi Arabia's original uh, name was Abiyah. We read in Genesis. Right? A lot of the Saudi Arabians, they go back to a man named Ishmael. Are you familiar with Ishmael? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah, and then you had Abraham, Ishmael, and then he had sons. Yeah. We come from uh, Isaac, and your ancestors come from Ishmael. Uh, somebody can get uh, Isaiah 16 and uh, is it verse 10? It talks about Kirijah. It's Kirijah, if I'm not mistaken, that's either a city in Ishmael's land or a, a, a deity of Ishmael. So what's going to happen is the, all the resources and the abundance of riches that are in Saudi Arabia they're going to be unearthed. A lot of it is under the earth because the so-called white man, what he did, he's plundered that land. The only thing really over there is oil. But there's supposed to be gold. There's supposed to be uh, 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 onyx. It talks about that in Genesis. The best onyx on earth comes from Saudi Arabia. Found it? Yeah, yeah, yeah read it. This is Isaiah 60, verse 10. Yeah. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. This is prophecy about the kingdom to come. After America is destroyed, by thermonuclear destruction, Isaiah is prophesying of future events that are going to happen post America because this didn't happen during Isaiah's time and it didn't happen after his time. So read it again. It's Isaiah 60, verse 10. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, yeah. and your king shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I spoke thee, but in my favor have I had mercy upon thee. Yeah, did you hear what that said? It said that the sons of strangers are going to build up our temple. Now, the people who are in Israel today, those aren't the real Jews. Everybody on earth knows that, except for a lot of people here in the States. This is the one place where you can get excommunicated if you speak about it. Now, that land was bought and paid for by people who were of the same race as them. Now, Edmund Rothschild purchased that land back in the late 1800s. And then 50 years later, they placed the Khazars, uh, uh, the, the, Ca the Caucasus, or the people from the Caucasus Mountains, they place them in that land. So they don't fit that prophecy, right? Now that also, uh, keep going in that scripture, uh, verse 10, one more time. Okay. It's Isaiah 60, verse 10. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, right. and their kings shall minister unto thee. Right, their kings shall minister unto us. Now a lot of the Saudi princes, they're some of the richest people on earth. The scripture says, the meek shall inherit the earth, and hardly shall a rich man inherit the kingdom. So a lot of those things, a lot of those things that they own, so I'm talking about tangible assets and resources, that's just going to be hoarded for us. And the scripture talks about that too. Go ahead, read that in John 27, uh, like 15. Go ahead. And your king shall minister unto thee, for in my wrath I smote thee. Yeah. But in my favor has my hand mercy on thee. Yeah, in his wrath he smote us. When you, if you know about the besiege of Jerusalem, and the, they called them the Punic Wars in, in 70 AD, there was the Syria Wars. Then in 70 AD is when they finally took us down in uh, Masai. You know, this is the history that they haven't teach. They don't teach our people in school. You know, but the reason why we were in Africa is because we got kicked out of our original land in, in 70 AD. 
and we fled into the different parts of Africa in the Far East and Europe. And we repopulated for a period of a thousand years. Go ahead. Verse 11, therefore thy gates shall be open continually. Go ahead. They shall not be shut day nor night. All right, there's gonna be no locks. In the kingdom of heaven, we're not gonna have to worry about locking our doors. Because nobody's gonna break in. Go ahead. That men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. Go ahead. And that the kings may be brought. Keep going. Verse 12, for the nation and kingdom. This is talking about slavery in the kingdom of heaven, servitude. You gotta remember, who's in servitude right now? The real children of Israel. The lost sheep of the house of Israel are, in a, are, are still in captivity right now. Go ahead. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee yeah. shall perish. Shall die. Go ahead. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. Keep going. Verse 13, the glory of Lebanon shall come up to thee. The glory of Lebanon. Lebanon is a beautiful country. You know, we're, you see, we got coats on it. We don't like the cold. Why? Because we're tropical people. <laughs> you know? We're, we like warm weather. You know? Go ahead. So it says Lebanon's going to be transferred over unto us. Go ahead. The fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together. Right, because the sap and the resin from all those trees can actually heal you. It's actually good for your skin, and they, it's good for aromatherapy. Go ahead. I will make the place of my feet glorious. Go ahead. Verse 14, the sons also of them that afflicted me shall come bending unto me. The, the sons of those that afflicted us that have come unto us bending. So who owns, who occupies on Lebanon right now? The sons of Ishmael and the sons of Edom. But their biblical nationalities are Edomites and Ishmaelites. So that, that didn't happen after Isaiah. It didn't happen during the time of who the world calls Christ which his name is Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. They weren't coming up to them. They were, he still understood that Rome was in control. You know, go ahead. And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. Keep going. And they shall call thee the city of the Lord, mm -hmm. the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Keep going. Verse 15, where at? Um, Do we, we reach the part about the dromedaries? Dromedaries. What verse is that? Verse 15. Oh, you're there? Yeah. Okay, yeah, Slocky, read it. Okay. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through thee. Right. It says, when you were forsaken and hated, and no man went through thee. And who occupies the most dangerous cities in the United States? So called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Some of the most dangerous areas you can ever go through some of the most hated areas, not only here, but in the foreign countries. You go to Brazil, and, uh, Mexico, and some of these other countries, some of the worst parts of those countries are occupied by who? The melanated people, right? So it says, where we used to be like that, keep going. Uh, the one talking about the is still verse six. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Restarted verse uh, five. Oh. Is Isaiah six and verse five, then thou shalt see and flow together, and our hearts shall fear and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. Yeah, the sea, when you read in the scriptures, the sea represents people, a multitude of people. So it's gonna be converted unto us. And when it's converted unto us, the Lord is gonna enlarge our heart, meaning our spirit, so that we can accept it. Because we see all this coming over to us, and we don't, our spirit hasn't been enlarged, meaning being perfected, we're going to see, oh, something's wrong. Because guess what? You got a lot of our people, they don't want payback. You know, they want equality. They don't want supremacy. The Lord is about supremacy. He's not about equality. And he never has been. That's why he dismantled everybody at the Tower of Babel. If you know, understand the story of the Tower of Babel, everybody came together to try to be one. The Lord said, no, nah, uh-uh, stop that. We're going to split all your languages up, and I'm going to keep the pure language with, uh, with the sons of Shem, through Eber and then Pele. Everybody else, you're gonna start speaking Aramaic, you're gonna start speaking Greek, you're gonna start speaking Latin, you're gonna start speaking Turkish, uh, uh, Germanic, Slavic languages, uh, Amric, the, the Kushite language, uh, uh, Zulu, Swahili, all these, uh, uh, Mandarin, all these languages uh, uh, were dished out way back during the time of the flood. 
even in Mandarin, I think it's for the number eight. If you look at the number eight, it looks like a boat. All right, and that boat, it goes back to, they say, it goes back to when the whole earth was flooded. So even they know that there was a flood at one point in time. Keep going. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. Yeah. Verse 6, the multitude of camels shall cover thee. Right, the multitude of camels shall cover thee. And camels are a much better transportation source than uh, uh, horses. Because if you try to if you try to put a huge load on a horse and bring that mug through the desert, his ass is going to die. But a camel, they can go uh, 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 miles and miles on end and still retain their water source uh, with inside of them. So all that's gonna come unto us, because guess what? The same Africa, all these uh, riches that are in Africa, the land of Ham, they're going, it's gonna get brought back on camels. All that gold in the Far East, all them uh, crystals that are under the ground in Russia, uh, the brother uh, just uploaded a video, they just found the largest uh, crystal cave. He said the junk was so huge that the dude could walk on it like it was a bridge, you know? Large-ass, uh, look like a big-ass cylinder stuff. A lot of that stuff is under Russia. Look, we're gonna be sending Esau on excursions to uh, to the North Pole, and Antarctica. Yeah, you gotta get all that, bro. <laughs> Deal with the polar bears. Figure that shit out. But you, you know what I'm saying? You better come back. You better come back with what we need in a sufficient amount of time. All right, we might make his ass swim. You know, Esau like bathing. They like, they like ice water. And shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> make your ass swim, all right? Whipping them and everything. Yeah, whipping you. Get out there, nigger. Go ahead. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Go ahead, Ron. The dromedaries, if I said it right. Yeah, dromedaries, so that's like uh, the baby camels. I remember we looked that up a while ago. That's just like another source of uh, uh, transportation, you know, transporting goods, the dromedaries. Basically, though, all the, the Earth's economy is gonna be get transferred over to us, you know? Go ahead. The dromedaries of Midian and Ephah, all day from Sheba shall come. Right, so all the way down to uh, Cush. All right, that's why that land by the Nile is still very fertile. It just has to be unearthed. You just need to get bombed to smithereens so we can see what's underneath. That's all. Go ahead. They shall, they shall bring gold and incense. Mm -hmm. They shall show forth the praises of the Lord. All right, so he didn't stick around, but what I was going to tell him is a lot of the precious incense and resins, they come from the Middle East area. So that's all going to be given to us. We talk about oud. You know, if you look up, let somebody look up the price of uh, a one ounce a one ounce of oud powder. You'd be surprised how much it costs. You found that free stuff in her job? Yeah, that free job while somebody looks up the price of oud. O-U-D. O-U-D. This is Job chapter 27, verse 16. Though they heap up silver as the dust and prepare raiment as the clay. And you, we already know that when it says as dust, you can't even see dust. So that's a, that's buku money. And how do we also know they got money? They built Dubai out of nothing. Bro, a lot of Dubai is supposed to be underwater. Like, they had to put a lot of land over there just to build up some of these places. I think they got like four or five of the largest skyscrapers on earth. Yeah. They got the largest uh, uh, indoor uh, pool that's the deepest. That shit is like 250 feet deep, you know? It's, it's got, and when you go, get to certain levels, it's like museums, you can swim through museums. Niggas over there, they got, uh, they got uh, four wheelers that turn into jet skis. You know what I'm saying? They got, uh, you can ride in a Ferrari. I seen this shit, it looks like a Ferrari, but then the wheels turn underneath and you can take the shit on land. They got the tallest restaurant in the earth. So you know they got money. And then again, it's, it's financed all by these Ishmaelite princes. They call them Saudi princes. But remember, they, a lot of these riches they got from us during the transatlantic slave trade. Look, Ishmael was a poor bastard. Before Ishmael was ruling, it was Esau, remember? The, uh, 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 the, the Ottomans and Ishmael, look, they got their, their that religion and stuff beaten to them. It was some Ishmaelites that believed in uh, 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 in Muslim and stuff like that. But you gotta remember, they were clinging to old deities. You know, they were worshiping all types of other stuff. It was Esau really, just like he did with us, that beat Christianity and us, he beat Islam and all that into them. Just like during the Spanish Inquisition, he had the same thing with the Ottoman Empire. Either get down with the, with the sun and moon worship 
or you're going to get your ass beat. And when they did that, they were able to plunder our riches, just like the Knights Templar. You know, just like you see, you see the machetes with the hooks, the moors. Those are also wicked ass Israelites, man. So go ahead, read, read that from Job again. Oh, you got that word? Yeah. Yeah, we'll get a, what's that say? What? What? Is it like a type of oh, yeah, yes. O-U-D. Yeah, O-U-D. Ood, what you got? Like hey, let this brother read it. Go ahead, Rocky. Yeah, I got a Ood. It's inside Ood. It says $3,500. For how much? Yeah, keep reading. Okay, it says, were we to red, red steel sinking gray, Kelaton wood today, the price of a bottle would be no less than $10,000. See that? That's good. <laughs> so when it said the fir tree, the cedars, and all the stuff going to be converted unto us, this is going to be converted unto us too. That, that just said one bottle. Now, this is not talking about like a, a liter bottle. We talk about a bottle that's probably like this big, bro. You know wow. what I'm saying? Like, it's not. we're not talking about more than seven ounces of oud. Go ahead. And then the decade of aging, thirty to $50,000. Woo! That's a lot. That's expensive. <laughs> Bro, there's some bottles of wine out there that the Rothschilds got that's worth like a million dollars. It's like a million dollar wine bottle out there. You know what I'm saying? Here we are banding our money together to get a, like a $150 bottle of tequila. And the Rothschilds, every day they just popping <laughs> a $25,000 bottle of wine. You know, and then of course, you know, they got, they got a shot, a double shot of infant's blood on the side. You know, you know how they get down. What you got, bro? Yeah, I also got some on it. Because uh, if you know who comes from a wood called uh, Argar wood. Argar, yeah, yeah Argar wood. wood. Yeah. You know, it says pure grade Argar wood oil, which is oom, may cost you anything between 10000 and 40000 depending on its origin type and distillation process. Indian wood oil is the most valued uh, among all types of Argar wood oil, and it costs 32000 to 40,000 USD. Wow. Yeah, Elam, you got to come up off of that. <laughs> Elam, you got to come up off of that. And Oud, Oud is less, a nice masculine smell, too. For brothers and these yeah, brothers yeah. that are fortunate enough to smell Oud, it's very, very strong and masculine. Let's end with our Revelation 2 and uh, you get it, brother. Yeah, finish that. Revelation 2, uh, be that overcoming uh, rule over the nation. Finishing up in Job, I'll start, start back at the top. Uh, verse, this 20, Job chapter 27, verse 16. Though he heap up silver as the dust and prepare raiment as the clay, he may prepare it, but the just shall put it on. Yeah, and hey, when you read it specifically, when you read about Benjamin, it talks about how Benjamin uh, shall devour the prey, and in the morning he shall divide the spoil. That morning is talking about uh, the first day in the kingdom of heaven, right? Because when... When, in, in ancient times, uh, where was where was uh, uh, the, uh, Jerusalem located? Everybody had to come to Benjamin's lot. All right, everybody had to come to Benjamin's lot when it came to high holy days and things of that nature, because that's exactly where everything was located. When you wanted to go downtown Israel to the capital, you had to come to Benjamin, this, uh, which is the, uh, in the Hebrew is Banyamyan or the son of the right which also plays into that. It's not literally Benjamin passing out everything. We're talking about where everybody's going to congregate. You know? Dude, that's deep. That's a deeper understanding for the tribe of Benjamin. Go ahead. No, I'm going to let this brother read it. Finish it out, bro. It's the book of Revelation, chapter 2, starting off at verse 25. But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, mm -hmm. and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers. Yeah, that's in the law, statutes, and commandments. The Lord saying we can rule like that, just not over our brothers. That's all. We can rule over the heathen. We can beat their asses to pieces. You know, if we see some roadkill, we can give that to the heathen. You know, here you can eat this. Do your thing. Get down. Hope you don't die. <laughs> you know. Go ahead. Even as I have received of my father. Right, so Yahweh believes in slavery and he told Yahweh Shai, hey, this is the business and this is what's going to happen on earth. And that, again, it's in our law, statutes, and commandments, but you can't even get you can't even get to that point. Or go to 13 and 9 real quick. We'll end there. Come, come. You got to uh, wait. You can't enact how you feel yet. 
That's why you Israelites, that you moved over into Israel, you can't run up in a prime minister's building and tell him, nah, this is my land, and you need to uh, put your ass into slavery. <laughs> That's not gonna work. What's the point of fleeing this land if you can't control the resources on earth still? I don't wanna be in rulership and, and Esau is still mining and raping the earth and not giving the earth no breaks, you know? He almost had Gad on the, the brink of extinction because of the buffalo. I was watching that this week, man. They had to take the buffalo and the bison and literally put them in zoos and breed them just in order to get them back, bro. Because it was killing them off so much and, and trying to ship the meat out. And what was happening was they were gluttonous. They couldn't even uh, eat all the meat. They couldn't even smoke all the meat. They were just killing it for the fur and letting the, uh, the meat just rot out in the field. That's not good for the earth either. Go ahead, Aki. Revelation chapter 13, verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Hey, this, and for all of us, I know it for all y'all brothers too, this is the answer to all your problems. That's right. We heard Revelation 13 and 10. That's right. It was like, no, I ain't going back to whatever the hell I believed in. That's right. The Lord says you have to go into slavery. Nah, the Lord believes in slavery. There's no way you can read around that. I don't care what translation you're in. All right, and then to back it up, Exodus 21 and 16, right. Zechariah 11 and 5, it's just too many scriptures where the Lord talks about payback. So all you Christians, you just bugged out. You bugged out, and you're not going somewhere to die forever and stay there. All right, when the kingdom of heaven is established on earth, there will be slavery, and you Edomites, you're going to be the slaves. That's right. That's right. All right. You're going to bring us whole stones, and you're gonna build up our kingdom. That's right. All right. There's gonna be there's gonna be no more gluten. There's gonna be no more itis. All right. There's gonna be no more of this concrete, man. That's right. There's That's gonna be right. complete righteousness under the elect of Yasha Allah, man. 144,000 in the one third. All right. So we're gonna punya hakodum, speak faith to east, and give all praise to our power. Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah Bashem, Rakhakadash. Okay. Yahweh is the heavenly Father. Uh, the Heavenly Father who created Yahweh Shai and they created all of us. Rakah HaKodash is the Holy Spirit. All right, Yahweh Shai is the only begotten Son who you ignorantly call Jesus Christ. You non-Israelites and you Israelites. By Shem in the name of Rakah HaKodash is a comforter. That's what uh, guides us in all understanding. The Holy Spirit, or like the scripture says, the Holy Ghost, which is really the Holy Spirit. And double honors, of course, to our senseis. Our masters, our teachers, and rulers, our elders and apostles, a great millstone. Shalom, and double honor to you all. And the, to the household of faith, we'll say shalom and stay strong. Shalom. It's so far, right? Okay, let's try to pack in here as much as we can.